Misfit Toys. Hey, what's happening to Mike Schmidt's 40 year old boy podcast? That sounded almost conspiratorial. That was a weird opening. That was a weird, hey, what's happening? I'm, I was like, I was looking around in a street corner. Hey, hey, what's happening? Or if I was hiding in a parking garage waiting to talk to Dustin Hoffman or Rob Redford, hey, hey, what's happening? It's me, Deep Throat. I got news for you. I'm going to say this. In the 70s, Robert Redford, a beautiful man. Now, of course, he looks like uh, a shrinky dink. He looks like those apples when you used to, there was a toy once when I was a kid. I don't remember what the fuck it was, but you would, you would make an apple go bad or brown or wrinkled. And then you'd put eyes on it and be like, Hey, look, it's apple man or whatever the fuck. That was a toy I had when I was a child. I don't know if I had it, but I saw it a commercial. And so you were supposed to turn fruit into people. And so Robert Redford back then, of course, incredibly beautiful, not a line on his face. Uh, although if there were lines, they were gorgeous. They were weathered lines that showed that he was concerned about women's lib. That's what they cared about in the 70s, and that's how you got laid. But now, uh, Ronald, Robert, Ronald Redford? Ronald Redford looks fucking terrible. I didn't want to talk about that guy, but Robert Redford, uh, he, he just, he looks like, you ever not, you ever don't fold your laundry for like a week, and then you go to pull out a shirt, and you're like, oh my Christ, it's Robert Redford. That's happened to me before. I've actually gone ahead, I have, I have ignored the folding duties, and then I pulled out a shirt to wear and went, Jesus Christ, how did, how did Robert Redford get into this basket? Uh, but what, I, I digress. I'm going to go back to this and say to you that Robert Redford, however, back in the 70s with Dustin Hoffman, and I'm, look, I'm sure there are some people who found Dustin Hoffman attractive, but next to Robert Redford, he looked like a mouse. Like Robert Redford comes in and he's just, he's the sun in a suit. He's like this beaming, incredibly beautiful man. And everybody's like, holy fuck, is that Robert Redford? Well, I got to climb on that. And then Dustin Hoffman hobbles in and everyone goes, wow, it's Ratso Rizzo. And he's like, no, 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 no. I played Ratso Rizzo. And they're like, no, 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 no. Standing next to Robert Redford, you actually look like Robert uh, fucking R- Ratso Rizzo. Not Robert Redford. You look like Ratso Rizzo. I apologize. My mouth isn't working. Uh, <laughs> but back then, you know, Hoffman hobbles in next to him and everybody's like, good Christ. But in all the president's men, of course, they're doing all the hard work and they're going out and they're getting stories and they're toppling a government. Uh, I don't know if they're toppling a government so much as getting a president to resign, which, by the way, remember back then when you can get a president to resign and everybody was like, yeah, take him down. This guy did. You know what? Because what did Nixon do? Nixon, I think he read somebody else's mail. Is that what I'm is that what I'm remembering? He sent eight guys to get it, clearly. But they all and there was a fucking show on HBO just did a show called The White House Plumbers or whatever the fuck. And it's Woody Harrelson and uh, Jason Thibodeau. I don't know. I, I can't. Jason Thoreau. Justin Thoreau. Could be Jason Thibodeau. Uh, I think it's Justin Thoreau. Regardless, I watched uh, one episode and it's a series, but it's one of those deals where like it's a historical show, right? So I know what happened. Ignore what I just said a minute ago where eight guys stole somebody's mail. I know what happened. Watergate it was a break in. And, and I will tell you, in the opening, there's like this weird thing that they type. They give you like words. And uh, I learned something from that. I didn't know they tried the Watergate break in like five times. Uh, I may be misrepresenting. Go watch the show. Well, don't watch the show. Well, watch the first 30 seconds of the show and you'll learn this or Google it. Why not? Uh, I didn't know they tried the, the Watergate break in a bunch of times and they finally fucking had to do it because it whatever. But in this show, again, you're not teaching me anything I know. Uh, Nixon was this guy and then he resigned and then he waved at the helicopter and you won't have me to kick around anymore. And then checkers the dog and then he goes off. And I've seen Frost Nixon. It's a fucking brilliant movie. Watch that. I think it's Michael Shannon and fucking Frank Langella. Frank Langella, he, his voice is so great. He sounds like he's got a throat full of rice pudding, but it doesn't fucking matter. I, I would listen to him all goddamn it because he talks. He's very much like, it's, I can't do it, really. But it, it sounds like his throat is too closed, but it doesn't matter because his voice is still... I'm not doing a good Langella. I, look, I never claimed to do a good Langella. Get off my dick. Uh, but... But Langella is a guy who's got a voice because he, he was also in uh, he's in Dave. Man, Langella's been presidential adjacent in a lot of films. That's crazy. 
uh, because he was a he was a press secretary or something in in Dave, which is where uh, Robert Klein or uh, is it Robert Klein? Yeah, I think so. Got Kevin Klein, dudes. You hear how rusty I am? Like, I mean, I it's been so fucking long since I've done this or been in front of a fucking microphone or even talked to anybody for Christ's sake that now uh, vomiting stuff out on the fly is usually my go to. That's my strength. And here I am bitching up names and all that kind of stuff. Nobody likes it. Nobody cares. You care. Everybody cares. Uh, I will get to that in a minute. <laughs> But let me let me finish this unbelievably important Langella thought. <laughs> I know you guys have been like, where the fuck is Mike? I got to get my Langella news. I've been gone seven weeks. Everybody's like, fuck, man. How am I supposed to learn about Langella with Mike on the fucking shelf? Uh, Langella's in Dave, which is, of course, Kevin Klein plays. He plays the president who's a dick. And then he plays a guy who looks like the president who becomes the president because this guy has an aneurysm while he's fucking Laura Linney. I believe it is. And, uh, and then he becomes a cool president. He's like, hey, everybody. And then Charles Gringoden comes over and they make a sandwich. And then Sigourney Weaver is totally hot as his fucking uh, first lady. Uh, it's a great movie. Watch, if you haven't seen Dave and you want to feel good, watch Dave. Uh, it's, it's fun. And look, you're, you, I know you're like, I'm so sick of fucking politics. And I don't blame you. But it's not really politics. It's, you know, it's a, it's a rom-com set within the White House. And uh, the, the, the evil... Kevin Klein. I would look, there is some politics. I'll, I'll share this with you now. The evil Kevin Klein. Spoiler alert, by the way, if you've never seen Dave, I apologize. I'm telling you to watch it and I'm ruining it, but whatever. But the evil Kevin Klein, the, uh, the president who actually, you know, gets a fucking aneurysm as he boning somebody. Uh, he's a dick. Like he kills a jobs bill. He's a bad guy. And I E a Republican. So yeah. Uh, and look, if you're a Republican, I don't give a fuck. Be who you want to be. I'm not, I'm, I'm all right. Let's talk about this really quick. One of the reasons I don't come on here is I've spun myself up in such a way that I'm like, you can't say this. You can't say that. You shouldn't say this. You shouldn't say that. Uh, and, and that's not even true. It's just it's it, that's a very minor part of it. Please think. Please don't think that I'm sitting here going, I can't talk because people. Uh, I just I love you guys. You're my friends. And I don't want everybody to go. Oh, man, what a this guy fucking hates me. I don't hate you because I did hear that. I mean, I look. All right. Let's talk about this for a second. I've been gone a while. And uh, I want to thank everybody who stepped up and reached out and was very kind and said, hey, man, what's going on? Are you all right? And then there's some people who reached out and they're like, hey, fuckhead. Uh, and that's not fun. Or people leaving passive aggressive comments on YouTube videos. And I even I even responded to one. I was like, what do you mean? Uh, it was our buddy Sal, actually, who, who wrote it. And I go, what do you mean by this? And he like never even answered me. And I'm like, all right, I guess I'm just going to sit here because I'm not going to pursue it. Um, and another funny thing is Sal. Uh, uh, I, I love Sal. Please, please. Don't, I'm not calling anybody out. Everybody has a right to be angry at me. Uh, because I wasn't putting out content. I get that. Uh, but our buddy Sal, uh, he has my phone number. And granted, I, you know, I've, I've probably ignored things in the past. I don't return texts very well. Although this is, we've turned over a new, <laughs> a new leaf with a new phone under it. I, I, my thumbs are ready to go. If you know me, send me a text and I'll answer it. I promise. And that goes for everybody who wrote me on my birthday, uh, who I haven't answered yet. And everybody who wrote me when the hurricane hit and who, whom I haven't answered yet. I'm getting there. I promise. I'm going to call these baby steps. That's what I'm going to call them. Uh, all right, let's pivot back. We were talking about Langella, and then we went into Dave. Uh, oh, so all right, I.E. Republican. He's a bad guy. And then Dave, uh, the guy who looks like the president, becomes the president. And then he is, of course, a good guy, i.e. a Democrat. And he and Charles Grodin make sandwiches and, and find a way to make all these budget cuts to save a jobs bill. And then Langella wants to fucking put him through a window because Langella has him as a puppet president. And then Langella decides he's going to pivot and run for president on his own uh, fucking merits. Uh, and again, so there, I don't want to tell any more because I'm really giving the plot of the movie away. But if you haven't seen Dave, you should see it. And just from look, just from that description, just from me doing Langella with a throat full of fucking tapioca. Doesn't that make you want to fucking tune in? Holy shit. Kevin Klein and tapioca throat Langella. I'm in for fuck's sake. Uh, and I can't blame you. It's right there. It's waiting for you. It's all there waiting for you. Who's that? Who, who else is right there waiting for you? Is that is that Brian Adams? I will be right there waiting for you. I don't know if that's him. Again, my brain isn't working. Uh, I'm fried. And, and it shouldn't be that way. I should be a guy who constantly, look at that, snapping and snipping. Uh, I'm a guy who constantly has facts at his, at his disposal. Right there. Pulls them right out of the ether. Drops them right in your fucking brain pan. Uh, but my brain pan right now is a little, it's cracked a little bit, but we'll get there. That's a muscle guys. It's a muscle. Podcasting is also a muscle. You got to go ahead and use it or you'll lose it. So I got to jerk off every day. Even if you're not fucking anybody, you're still fucking rolling. 
You're, you're, you're giving your guy the rise and shine and giving him a nice buff and shooting your fucking loads for distance. And you're like, all right, here we go. I don't know why I compare that to podcasting. Probably because that's what my life has become. Uh, I don't shoot loads for distance, by the way. Not anymore. I mean, you do that with your with a person, but you don't do that, you know, by yourself. Yeah, because that's just stupid. We <laughs> now now things are bad. You know what? Just thinking about the phrase loads for distance. You know what I'm thinking about? <laughs> uh, you ever see when they have a frog race? And they'll put all the frogs at the starting line and everybody behind the frog is like, go frog. And they smash the fucking table and the frog has to make a leap and everybody's rooting. They're like, yay, go, go. Uh, that's what I think about when I hear loads for distance. It's like you got a little cardboard thing set up with a bunch of lines and you're like, all right, let's, I got to beat yesterday's record. I got to Bob beam in the shit out of this load. And uh, which would be a, a terrible and aggressive and wrong. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Especially if you're by yourself. Now, if you're with somebody or if you're with a group. Maybe you do that. I, maybe you're at a swing house. They got a low distance competition. Maybe you do that. But also, I'll, get, I'll be honest, if you're at a swing house and you're wasting a load at the low distance competition, you're not doing it right. There's all sorts of ladies over there willing to catch a load. Probably some dudes, too. It's a swing house, man. Who knows? Anything goes. Weird hands in the dark. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, man. I want to buy a swing house and name it Weird Hands in the Dark. Uh, why wouldn't I, right? Why wouldn't I do that? Because I don't have any money. I'm not going to buy a, a load house. Swing house, swing house, load house. I don't want to buy any of those things. Um, so see, Dave, I guess is my bottom line. But also, let's pivot back to what I was talking about. Uh, all the president's men. And I said to my, I, like, if I was in, I said if I was in a parking garage and I was talking to a Robert Redford or a Dustin Hoffman, uh, I, I have to be, especially in the seventies, because Robert Robert Redford was he was a desirable gentleman. Again, truly good looking and a, 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 just a beacon in the night. And uh, and he went and talked to a guy named Deep Throat in the uh, in the parking garage. And uh, and I got to be honest, if I am Deep Throat and Robert Redford walks into the the uh, parking garage, uh, Lovelace be damned. I'm the first one to claim that name. Right. You have to. It's a Redford. You got to go. You know what, buddy? I'm going to give you a bunch of facts that'll bring down the presidency. And also let's go throat goat. Let's see if I can make that work for you, Robert. Uh, it's dark in here. Nobody's going to see anything. <laughs> like that's that's your that's your penance. That's your payment you got to extract from Redford. Hey, Redford, you know I I will give you all of these facts. However, first, cock down the old throat. And you know what? It was Hal Holbrook who played Deep Throat. And uh, and I'm telling you this right now. He would not have minded throating a one young Robert Redford because Hal Holbrook played for the other team. He worked the other side of the fence. He uh, was, uh, for lack of a better word, uh, I don't know if I can, all right, never mind, I can't say those things. Uh, I was going to use a, well, I'll use a word that I've used in the past, a torch. And, uh, and then people are like, yeah, you can't say torch. Um, and it's, I don't, it's not a pejorative. I didn't think it was. I, what do I know? I don't know anything about anything anymore, as you know. Uh, but we're here. Aren't we here now? And we open up, we open up Audacity. We're talking into it. Everything's fine. Uh, I started this a couple times. I, and I also look, I've started a few shows in the past seven weeks and then, and then there's a barricade that shows up and it's like, don't do that. No one likes it. Uh, it's a weird thing. It's a strange thing. And I, I was talking with, I, and I will tell you this, uh, I have spoken about this to people who I normally don't speak to about this. Like I was at a party the other day, uh, my great friend, Murray Valeriano had a party and I know what you're thinking to yourself, Mike, you went to a party. Exactly. See, that's the thing. We're coming out of the old shell. We're bursting out. This is why I'm back doing a podcast. This is why I'm back streaming on Twitch. Uh, it's time, right? It's fucking time. Because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be dead soon, man. And, and, and there's no, look, let's put it this way. I'm already living like I'm dead to a certain extent. Now, I don't mind hiding in my apartment in the air conditioning and watching Kojak. That's fucking cool. But also, uh, it's not cool, man. Because that's not why I'm here. And I got and and I and I wind up in these all these fucking situations. I put myself in a tizzy and I wind up fucking having to do shit I don't want to do. And then I'm sad that I'm doing shit I don't want to do. But it's my own fault because I don't put any effort into doing the things that I want to do. And look, I'm going to tell you this now. I'm I'm not going to make this a boohoo fucking thing. It's just, it's just real. I'm just I'm just trying to tell you honestly what's going on. Um, but I know it's the first show in in almost two months, and you guys are just like ah oh, fuck again with this. And I I don't I don't want no one wants to hear how hard somebody's life is. Everybody's got challenges. Everybody's got kids who are sick, kids that need to go to school now. Everybody's going back to school. Uh, you know, uh, you got to work hard so you can get the G.I. Joe with the Kung Fu grip, as Eddie Murphy said. Everyone's got lives, man, and they got to live them. Uh, but all I can do is tell you about my life and and hope you care enough to listen to it. You know what I mean? And, and uh, 
I've just been doing a lot of thinking about me and, and who I've been and what I thought I was and then what it turns out I actually am. You know what I mean? Like, it's funny when you guys talk about ADHD and ADD and all those sorts of things and anxiety. Um, like, I, you know, and now I recognize that I those are a big part of my life and I didn't think they were uh, to a certain extent. I just thought I was me. But also, you'll, you'll laugh at this. Like, even when I went to parties, you know, 10 years ago or whatever the fuck, uh, I... I I, I'm not a mingler. Like I would never go and talk to people. I'm, I can talk to people. I'm, I'm not bad at it and I can handle it. If, if it winds up in a conversation, I like talking to people, but I was always gravitate to somebody I knew or somebody, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and like, even when I went, I went to this party at Murray's house the other day. Okay. I walk in, I know Murray and I, and I looked around and I knew Murray and, and his lovely wife, Mary, and I didn't see anybody else that I knew. And I was like, Oh no, am I going to have to fucking mingle and then tell people what, you know what I mean? I don't know. So I was going to hide. Like, you know, that's the thing. You always find that empty room where you're just like looking around um, and hoping nobody comes in the door. Uh, but then Pat was there, my friend Pat, and he turned around and he looked at me and he's like, oh, my God, now I have somebody to talk to. And I'm like, oh, Jesus, that's great. And Pat and his wife were there. And uh, and so I remember when I said the thing about how I tell, told people about my weirdness uh, that didn't know about it. Uh, Pilar was one of them. I wound up talking to Pilar at the uh, Pilar, Pilar, Pilar. I, I never know. Uh, I think I've even asked and had it clarified. And yet here I am doing both versions. Um but Pat, you know, and he and I then hooked up, joined at the hip, and we walked around, and we went outside because they said hi to Murray at least, and I said hi to Murray, and then there was some guy named Roger there, and it was funny. Everybody else was, uh, you know, Murray's wife works in the industry, like deep in the industry, and she's extremely successful. How successful, you ask? Uh, Murray's wife has been nominated for, I think, a ca- four different, four separate occasions for Academy Awards. She works with the Coen brothers. She's their costume person. So she, you know, she's in tight and she's got a ton of people that she knows and all that. And Murray knows them too. They're, they're both their friends. But, you know, it reminds me of when we went one time a million years ago. Uh, one of my friends was dating somebody who is, was, was, an, was an executive, but has now become a very important and rich executive. My friend doesn't date them anymore. But it was uh, this woman was part of a production company that now invented Top Chef. So you can, you can understand just how well she's doing. But at the time she was an executive and still also doing well. And she had a really big house and we went to a party there. I've told this story before we were all out on the deck and it's just me and fucking door and Pardo. And you know, cause we're the Chicago comedian friends. We're just out there in the deck being like, what the fuck? And Pat, I think Pat was there. And, uh, like we went up, we went to the fucking to go get crudite and Natalie merchant was at the table. You know what I mean? And, and this is, so this is, uh, yeah, this is, 25 years ago so you know natalie merchant we know who natalie merchant is now but imagine natalie merchant 25 years ago i think she was still in heavy rotation i believe and still doing great and she she was with someone she was dating at the party and it's one of those deals where like you're just like hi uh and and she must have been like i don't know what the fuck is going on why am i here and why is this person talking to me and by i will tell you this by the way now (laughs) now it's 25 years later if you would have told me then when we were on that porch that Jimmy Dore would be the most famous person at that party, I would have burned you for a witch. I would have not in five centuries ever thought that that was a fucking possibility. And yet, and yet, and yet, here we are. Uh, and I know that you might come at me and be like, well, Natalie Merchant is more more popular than Jimmy Dore. She may be more known to a certain extent because of her, you know, the 10,000 Maniacs and a couple of big hits. Uh, but I haven't checked her streaming numbers, so I don't know if she still does well on Spotify. But uh, but for right now in the zeitgeist and and for who, the name that's known, uh, unfortunately, because of the pivot that the world took. Let me tell you, I wish I lived in a world where Natalie Merchant was clearly more popular than Jimmy Dore. All right. I, I the very fact that it's a coin flip or a question is is haunting to me. It shouldn't be the case. That should not be any sort of planet or globe that any of us inhabit. There's no way. But unfortunately, with the pivot that our fucking lives have taken, with the pivot that uh Society, I suppose, for lack of a better word, has taken uh, a, a a an attractive young troubadour with a lovely voice from three decades ago uh, has failed to keep up in popularity with a rabble rouser and bomb thrower who is heavily involved in the politics that have become the sports of our time. I had to drink water after that. My throat couldn't even spit out that bile filled thought. Um so so what I'm saying is that like Pat and I at this party, we were we were now the new again. We were almost the reverse Natalie Merchants. 
Like, because everybody in that room knew one another and they were comfortable in, in the industry. And we were just like, man, what the fuck are we doing here? Uh, and we went outside and this guy Roger shows up and everybody else is wearing uh, so, the same uniform. You know what I mean? Everybody else is wearing their nice and they're all dressed nice and they're lovely people. And again, nobody was mean. Nobody looked askance at us. And I'm sure if I would have sat down and tried to blend or mingle, I could have pulled it off to a certain extent because I'm I look, I can handle a conversation. But it's that thing in my brain where like sometimes I don't want to. And by sometimes I mean every time. Uh, but at this party, we walked around, we go and I will. So this is completely true. Pat sees me. He's like, oh, my God, finally, you're here. Uh, let's do let's go outside and see Murray. So we went outside to go find Murray. And I started talking to Murray and Pat uh, Murray was talking to a guy named Roger. And Roger was wearing a bucket hat and a rock T-shirt and dungarees, if that's even a possibility anymore. And every, again, everybody else is wearing like, you know, the uniform, you know, the, the, the very successful clothes is silk. Nobody's wearing silk, but you know what I mean? Like fucking, they all look casually, comfortably dressed. All of them have walked out of a catalog of some sort. Roger looks like he delivered the catalog to your house. Uh, so, but immediately we, we jump into the conversation with Marie and Roger. And Roger also has like long, shaggy hair. Well, it turns out Roger's in a band. And then Roger knows a lot about music. And I'm not kidding you. I'm talking to Murray and Roger and Pat. And within a minute, Pat, the guy mentions a band and Pat goes, I had that guy in my podcast. And, they, and they're and they off to the goddamn races. Pat and Roger, the, Pat, hook, immediately, he forgets, he forgets me. That's not even, I'm not even exaggerating. He immediately, like his body language, everything, he turns right toward Roger. And the two of them are leaning on the garage in the back. And they're just talking music. And I'm looking at Murray and I go, well, I can think we lost Pat. And, uh, and, you know, Murray's the host. So, man, it's not like I can be a guy who's like, uh, hey, Murray, I'll just follow you around all day. But it turns out that Murray also, uh, despite he, the fact that he knows these people, Murray's also still uh, at heart a comic and perhaps a bit of a misfit comic, just like the rest of us. So he's he wants to talk to me. That's the thing. He's hanging with me. And then they have announced that food was ready. And he's like, come on, let's go get some food. And I go, ah, I go, I'll wait. He's like, what do you mean? And I go, let's all let all the fucking real people get food first. And I'll get one last. He's like, you're a guest just like everybody else. And I'm like, I know. I go, all right, look, I'll tell you. Uh, if fat guy goes first for food, it looks bad. He goes, wow. I never even thought of that. And I go, you don't have to. You're a skinny guy. You know, you're a normal sized person. So you don't, you can just whatever. But if... If fat guy goes first for food, uh, w- there will be, and, and again, this is probably projection, but it's also, I think there's a kernel of truth in it. At least one person in the party, they may not say anything, but at least one person in the party will look and go, oh yeah, of course the fat guy had to get them right away when the food came in. So I try to eat last. Like I let everybody in the place get a plate and then if there's, and then if there's anything left, I'll go get it. Now look, is this, is this a fat person's way to think? Is it a poor person's way to think? Is it a I'm not good enough person's way to think? Probably all of those things are true. Uh, but I have a little bit of all of those things inside of me. I have a fat head still and whatever the fuck. Uh, I used to do this when I worked on shows. Whenever I would get cast in a commercial or I would, uh, I've been cast in when I worked on basketball, uh, we would have craft services. And at basketball, the craft services were amazing. The Zuckers made sure there was fucking, un, I, I've talked about it before, just it was this unbelievable amount of food. There was a push cart that came through once with homemade egg salad and bagels. Like, I mean, just fucking amazing homemade food. And uh, every time we would call lunch, I would go out, we would go out, and I would wait. I would wait for all the crew. And, and, I, and also, I will tell you this, I just think it's good form to let the crew eat. The crew's working. I'm sitting around like a dumb fuck doing nothing, waiting to get shot. So that's always been my philosophy is that the crew should eat first. Um, and then the stars, you know, fucking Yasmin Bleeth and Richard Grieco want to go up and get one cherry tomato to split. Good for them. Um, and that's the thing is I'll just I'll just hang back. It's just always been my personal philosophy. A, because the people who are actually working and stuff should get food. And also B, what the fuck am I? besides nobody and also big fat guy nobody wants big fat guy to be at the head of the buffet line and taking the best pork chop nobody wants that fucking guy it's like the scene in almost famous where fucking firuza balk is talking to uh to fucking uh fuck who's she talking to uh billy curtip i think and she talks about the new girls that come and hang out the new the new you know fucking band-aids and she's like they always eat the steak instead of vegetables like they take everything and that's it stuck with me so not that i'm a band-aid and certainly not like i'm fucking billy crudup uh although like i said possibly throating redford in a parking garage back in 1972 um but still that's my philosophy so murray and i hung out together and pat's talking to roger and then 
Murray's like, finally, after a certain amount of time, he's like, come on in, man, come with me. He goes, I'm, you know, you can, we'll get food together and then it's a thing. And I'm like, all right, let's go. I go, if you're hungry, go get fucking food. <laughs> and he's just like, come with me. So we went in and we got food and, uh, and they had, what a spread. This is amazing. They had a mixture of catering from a couple of restaurants, but also his wife made, a, uh, made some Greek food specialties. Uh, like rice, there was like fucking rice pilaf and these fucking, there were no grape leaves, thankfully. I don't like grape leaves. I've had domatis before and I just, it tastes like dirt. I'm not a fan. Uh, but tons of Greek food and stuff. It was delicious. And I got a plate and, uh, and then I was talking to Murray and then we went outside and they were going to get the cake which I thought was too soon after food, but what am I? It's not my party. So then I went inside to finish because I had a whole, you know, I had a plate of food. And I know you're thinking, I, look, I didn't get the fucking ribs to tip over the Flintstones car, but I got, you know, I got a little of everything. I didn't go crazy. But then I sat on the couch inside and Pilar sat next to me and we started talking. And I, I wanted to, I really wish I could spend five hours talking to Pilar, Pat's wife, because she teaches screenwriting. And all I want to do is talk to her about movies. I want to go, why did you like this? What didn't you like about this? And what's your favorite movie of all time? What is this? What is that? Like, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Like I, I, and she's very knowledgeable and she's, she's so easy to talk to. I love, I love hanging out with her. So she sat down and we started talking and we, we went and talked about some Tarantino stuff. You know, obviously that came up, uh, talked about what her favorite movies are. We, and uh, I talked about Almost Famous again, which is another one that stays with me. I just mentioned our, our lovely Feruza Balk. Um, and then it pivoted into what, what her talking about podcasting and, and talking about Patreon and me talking about me not doing it. Uh, and then it just was off to the races. Like I wound up telling her, I go, look, I, you know, the thing is I've, I've somehow convinced myself that people don't want to listen to me and I don't know why. And she's like, you know, you're incorrect. And she goes, and also pe- I go, she's like, why don't you like just review movies or talk about, that? I go, because that's the lowest hanging fruit. Everybody does it. She goes, yes, but not everybody is you. You would be and blah, blah, blah. You've all heard this and you've all even said it to me. You know, everybody's like, oh man, you've got your unique imprint and your voice and people want to hear that. And I go, yes, that's really great. But at the same time, if I sit here and I tell you about Sorcerer by William Friedkin, how quick do you tune that out? Nobody wants to hear me talking about uh, monster trucks trying to drive over a rickety bridge. <laughs> Wait a minute. Maybe everybody wants to hear me talk about monster trucks driving over a rickety bridge. I don't know. I can't decide. Because I've had ideas for that sort of thing. But, but, and I will tell you this, though. Some of you might be on board with that kind of thing, and some of you might not. But that just is enough to make me go, well, then I shouldn't do it. When in reality, I should do it. This whole thing with no arbiters anymore, this whole thing with nobody promoting you, or, or you never have to, as I've said on the show many times before, I have, I have two television stations and a radio station that I own. This is the radio station that you're hearing me on now. And I have YouTube and Twitch. Those are the two television stations. And they're lying dormant. I'm doing nothing with them. And that's fucking ridiculous. I should be doing something with them. Absolutely. Uh, so when people get passive aggressive or angry with me, I, I understand it. It's because you've invested your love and your support and your time in what I do and, and how I do it. And you're disappointed in the efforts that I display in trying to bring it to anybody else like in your brain it's like when i you know what it's almost like jellyfish the band jellyfish i fucking worship jellyfish they only had two albums i've i it was funny murray was like hey man you know because i told him about he's like hey I'd, i'd love to listen to jellyfish so i sent him everything i had which was i sent him you know i had two the two main cds and then they had a five cd box set that came out with a bunch of live stuff a bunch of outtakes a bunch of covers it's it's incredible so i sent it all to him and he never got back to me. And I think a week later, I was like, hey, man, did you get that stuff? Did you even download it? He goes, yeah, I'm kind of surprised that this is what you liked. And I'm like, really? And he's, yeah, because I just didn't expect it. I expected something completely different. And we never really finished that thought. I don't think we've ever had a conversation because he was on a boat somewhere. So we didn't really discuss it. Um, but but in that moment when he told me that, uh, I probably felt a little bit the way you feel when I don't make any efforts to go ahead and do anything that I'm supposed to be doing. Because you're like, dude, we love you, we support you, we're willing to back you no matter what, and yet, here you are not doing anything. And so how are we supposed to support you? And and I get that. And then when I say stuff like, look, I totally understand if you don't want to listen to me anymore, you guys are like, do you not care? Do you not care? No, I, I care so much. I care a great deal. And I'm incredibly frustrated and disappointed in myself when I don't do the things I'm supposed to do to A, keep you guys on board, and B convince you that you haven't backed the wrong horse that line is directly from my first one-man show i was like i i only want to be successful for you 
Like, I mean, I want to be successful for me because I want money and pussy like everybody else in the fucking world. But I want to be successful so you guys will go, hey, see? See this fucking guy? I fucking knew. I fucking knew. And when I when I don't do anything and when you see me just fucking waylay myself and and also when you see me, I think I hope this isn't frustrating, but it might be when you see me mock it or you see me laugh about it. Pl- please know that that's what I have to do so I don't break out sobbing to you. <laughs> I mean, I, I I as I've said before, I'll look myself in the mirror and I'll go, what the fuck are you doing, man? And I'll laugh and I'll go, you are you are fucking insane. Um, and then. I try to rally myself, but there's fog and I try to get through it and it's rough. It just is, man. I'm not lying to you guys and you don't want to hear that. You know, you don't want to hear that it's tough or it's hard to talk into a microphone. I totally understand that because, you know, honestly, uh, (laughs) my friend, Mike Siegel, he wrote me is two weeks ago, probably. And he's like, uh, Hey man, uh, when's the next podcast? I'm starting to run out of shit to listen to on the boat. I'm fucking waiting. And I was like, first of all, I can't believe you listen. And and second of all, thank you. Uh, I've got to do one tonight. Like, I really have to do it tonight. I go, but the, you know, the issue is it's like, I don't, and I started to talk and he goes, just fucking talk, man. He's, That's what you do. And and it doesn't have to be like, this, you know, this fucking thing where you, it has to be important or great or perfect or whatever. He goes, just fucking do what you do because that's what people love. And Mike has, Mike has given me that talk a couple of times. It was funny. I talked when, when I was talking about getting back on stage. And I said, I went, I went and saw Gary Gullman. He did a couple hours and I wanted to see like how the greats do it now. And I, I was like, I got to watch, you know, before I do this, I want to see Gullman. I want to watch Nate Bargatze, who I've been told is the best, one of the best in the world right now. And these guys, and Mike is like, why don't you just go on stage? Cause you're Mike fucking Schmidt and you got fucking hilarious stories. He goes, you don't need to watch anybody, man. You just need to go up there and be yourself and do, and, and do what you do because you're fucking hysterical. And, uh, I mean, it, it was fucking I still have the text. I screenshotted it. You know, and it's amazing. It's incredible that he would say that. Uh, and, and now you're going to be like, did it work? Well, clearly it didn't because I'm telling you about it and I haven't been, you know, I'm not out there all the time. Uh, because, because it's, it's just a really, it's a really big wall to scale and you don't care. I, I know you don't. I mean, you look, let's put it this way. You do care. But in my mind, to sit here and belabor the point to you over and over and make it this thing where we're peeling the onion on me, uh, that's not a comedy show. That's not an interesting comedy show. No matter if I blow Robert Redford or not, it doesn't make it fucking hysterical or funny or anything you want to listen to. I don't know, man. I don't know. But my point is it's been, it, you know, it's been, it's been. So I talked to Pilar about it and she was like, you should just do it. And she's like, why don't you do like a, a movie review show on YouTube? And I'm like, because everybody does one. And she's like, yeah, but it's not you. And it's everybody's answer, and they're really kind. And and it's this thing where it's like, well, they they think more of me than I do, but that's also not true because I think I'm fucking great when I'm really doing it, when I'm fucking winging it and going, I, I and let my hands fly. I'm I'm like, man, I'm the fucking king. You know this. But then when I don't do it, I'm just like, ah, oh, yeah, you know, it doesn't matter. You're not good. Nobody thinks you're good. Stop doing it, man. Try to stop wasting everybody's fucking time. Ha. Ah. What a fucking weirdo. Uh, so the point is, I mean, I'll just say this. It's funny. I wasn't even going to talk about this that much, but but now we had to because we're rebooting. We're resetting whatever the fuck. Uh, talk is cheap. I'm not making any promises. I'm just telling you that, you know, it's Thursday and here's a show. And uh, next Thursday, there will be a show and there might be a show in between. I, I've because there were times I wanted to talk to you guys. And, and again, I do this thing where I'm like, well, it's not Thursday. You can't tell people because it's not Thursday. Or it's like, well, you know, you, you were on a Monday. You got to do it on a Monday because the last one was on a Monday. It's just, it's, I, I move the goalposts on my own fucking career constantly. Well, you can't do that. No, you shouldn't do that. Well, nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to do that. And uh, I, that guy's fucking annoying. If I could find him and strangle him to death, I fucking would. And I'd do it right here on the air. You guys would hear him fucking die for once and for all. Uh, but I can't, I can't get my hands on him. He's elusive. He's hopping around like an imp. Uh, he's inside my brain, leaping and moving and carving out fucking pieces of brain that he didn't think I'll need going into the future, but he's wrong. I want them. Give me back my brain. You fuck. Uh, you know what? That's going to be the name of the show. I think, let me go ahead and write down a time code. So I remember where that is. Give me back my brain you fuck you know what I'll just have an ellipses there 
because you'll all know what that means. Because fans of the show, remember, that's what the ellipses uh, means. If you ever, if anyone ever sends you a text and they're like, hey, man, dot, 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 means, hey, man, you fuck. Uh, we talked about that before. All right. Uh, so the point is, I'm I'm back here doing a show. Uh, and again, we're baby stepsing it. We're doing we're doing the best we can. We're going to just fucking talk and hopefully you guys like it or whatever. And maybe you won't. And who knows? And I've missed so much. That's another thing, man. You know me. I'm kind of topical. Like, I like to talk about shit that's going on. I don't want to talk about fucking politics anymore either because that's fucking finished. I, I, dudes, I can't believe anybody on fucking planet Earth watched the Republican debate a couple of weeks ago. Are you fucking kidding me? And And, and again... My social media was filled with it. Like people are like, and they're just dunking on people, and they're mad, and they're whatever. And like, dude, because first of all, I don't, I don't know why you care about politics at all. I mean, like, you got to vote or whatever the fuck. We, because we don't want, we don't want people who are marginalized or whatever the fuck to be hurt. I get that, so we vote accordingly. But, uh, but to watch a debate of, especially, let's put it this way, we know what Republicans fucking stand for. And again, if you're a Republican, what the fuck? I can't, I can't help you. You're backing a bunch of assholes, and that's you got to own that. But and you might not even you might be a Republican who doesn't fucking agree with them. And that's totally cool, too. That's fine. You might want to go back to the fucking. I, I, I'm not kidding. I tried to think of a good Republican. I couldn't pull one. I was going to say Reagan. He's a cock. I was going to say Nixon because he was before him. And I'm like, wait a minute. I don't even who's was Rutherford B. Hayes. I don't know what the fuck. Wait a minute. Didn't he do shaft? Um, I don't know. What if you like if you like some Republican who was good a million years ago? Eisenhower is he won? I don't even know. Who cares? But my point is, if you, right now, the way the Republicans are, are now, you can't support them. You can't. You can't think any good things. Their whole their whole bullshit is just like, no, boo, we hate that. We hate people. We don't like books. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, and you know, I shouldn't be surprised that they don't like books. How can I? How can I be surprised that they don't like books? Because these are people who didn't like medicine, and still don't. They're fucking mad at medicine. Oh man, there's a there's a a woman. I I guess she was a listener a million years ago, and I haven't heard from her. We haven't we've never corresponded. Maybe maybe a billion years ago when the show first started, but we're still Facebook friends. And and she's had a bit of a life. I don't want to get into it, but she's had some struggles, some hard things that weren't her fault. Uh, but now, man, she's pivoted to full fucking anti-vax. It was a conspiracy. They meant to hurt us thing, and even worse. She's like selling a fucking tool uh, that that's blasts you with infrared rays to fix you from, I don't know, everything. Literally, it'll show some guy with like a mongoloid foot and then you put the ray on it. It goes back to a regular foot. Like, I, I think, honestly, you know what she did? She ran the American werewolf in London transformation backwards. She's like, she showed him transform and then she hit him with the ray and he went back to being David Naughton. Look at that. This new ray will turn you back into David Naughton. Don't you want to be a pepper? Uh, but fuck me, man. I mean, I, and she posts. And again, other than that, she's lovely. She's got a beautiful dog and she's like, Hey, the sun's out. It's really nice. And all that stuff. But then she'll come in and she'll just be like, uh, Hey, by the way, that killer shot is killing more people. Who wants to buy a grifting ray? <laughs> and I'm like, all right, man, good for you. I mean, if you, if you can make $40 a crack off of a bunch of stupid people, then go for it. But these fucking people, I, so I could, I shouldn't be shocked. And I want to lump her in because I don't know if she doesn't. She's never displayed any political leanings. She's just anti-medicine, which is fucking bananas. But these people were they were that was the thing. They were against medicine. And so why shouldn't they be against books? You know what I mean? It, it, it makes sense. It's like being angry at clouds. Boo, clouds. You stole the sun away from me. It's like ancient caveman thinking it's so fucking dumb. And so these Republicans are all that's all they're doing is they're, they're like crabs in a barrel climbing over one another to see who can appeal to the stupidest people. And that's and that and they don't realize maybe they don't see it coming. But there's a whole on on the outside flank. There's a whole generation of people who are like, we fucking hate you, and we see what you're doing, and we're going to take care of it. Now they do see it because occasionally one of these idiots will step forward and go, you know what? Voting age should be 25. Whoa, <laughs> wait a minute, you fuckheads! Don't do that shit. You know, if, if you're old enough to get fucking to to have cigarettes, if you're old enough to go over and die and take a bullet for this country, you can vote for who runs it. But I love this thing with like, yeah, these kids are they're all totally uninformed. We got to take the vote away from them. And it's like, no, no, they're completely informed. They're nothing but informed. That's because now they have in, in their hand. They have the knowledge of the world. In the old days, you could keep people in the fucking dark. 
put whatever you wanted in textbooks and people had to follow it and read it. Well, now these people can Google it. And look, by the way, it's dangerous as fuck because you can find all facts and truths, but you can also find a bunch of fucking bullshit. I saw a fucking thing yesterday that terrified me. Some dude from Australia, he's a medicine guy. I don't know what the fuck. He was on the ver- their version of the Today Show, right? So he, he did a TikTok and he's like, I'm going to show you something that shows you why this world has now forever changed and you can never trust anything again. And, uh, and that's a hell of an opening. That's a hell of a lead sentence. I got You got my attention. I'm going to watch this. I don't know what it is. I hope it's not long because no matter what it is, I don't care if it's destroying the world. If it's longer than 45 seconds, I'm out. Uh, that's why they always think you want to watch long videos online. Fuck off. No, we don't. Um, but then the algorithm on YouTube, you got to do it in at least 10 minutes to make any money off of it. So, so you watch these people with all this filler. That's one of these reasons why when you watch a fucking tutorial video on something, like I had, I had to, like, I want to change my windshield wipers. And I know you guys are like, you don't know how to change your windshield wipers. I don't, I didn't have a dad. So I don't know fuck all about cars. So I was like, I'm going to find a way to ch- change my windshield wipers. So I, I watch a, tu- a YouTube tutorial and it's this guy and he's like, hi, I'm Scott. And I'm here to tell you about windshield wipers. Now, windshield wipers, it's very important that you have windshield wipers because when it rains, you need to see the road when you're driving. And also when they get to be all... And I'm like, dude, yes, I know all this shit. That's why I want to change my windshield wipers. Two minutes go by. And he's like, yeah, so what you really want to do is make sure if you're going to be out in inclement weather, you have to have the best windshield wipers possible. And there's an easy way for you to do it. You know, they'll... And I'm like, dude, shut the fuck up and show me. Show me shit that can be done in 45 seconds. That's it. That's all I care about. My whole life is 45 seconds at a clip. Uh, but, but they do these long fucking explanations and I'm like, I'm out. I don't give a fuck. You know what? I'll die in the rain. That's it. I've decided now I will die in the rain. We're finished. You and your tutorial can get fucked. I'm not watching 10 commercials. There is, there is no greater confidence in the world than when the ad comes on, on YouTube and it says, and the, and the bottom, it says, go to website there. there that is the greatest indicator of confidence you could ever have that you would ever think anyone in the world would click. Yeah, you know what? I definitely want to leave this YouTube video I was watching about Connor Bedard and go see what you're doing in Vacuum Town. I don't give a flying fuck about you. I don't give a flying fuck about Vacuum Town. I didn't want to watch your commercial here, but now I'm going to go to your fucking website for what? More vacuum news? Hey, do you guys still suck? That's all I need to know. <laughs> Perfect. Ah, oh, feels like I wrote that right, but I didn't. That's right off the top of my goddamn head. See, I'm rounding into shape. Took me a while. Fucking YouTube, man. They just, these algorithms are fucking crazy with the length and the time and the making money and whatever the fuck. So, I don't know, man. When when I, I see these people trying to bring you these messages and trying to tell you stuff, I've lost my place. I've, I, I'm not kidding. I'm vamping a little bit here because I've lost what I was talking about. We're talking about the Republicans. And then uh, I went back in presidents. And we wound up... Uh, Ah, oh, fuck, I don't even know. Whatever, let's get back to the debate. Who cares? I, I wasn't, I wasn't going to watch it. I don't know anybody who would watch Oh, people mad at medicine. People mad at books. Uh, I don't know. God damn it, I'm so mad. Oh, the, the, the young people with the knowledge of the world. And they can watch and find... Oh, the Australian guy! Bang! So he's, he's like, this is why you can never trust anything ever. And he should, then he goes, watch this video. And this video comes on. And it's, uh, and it's him on the Today Show. And he's talking with the two Today Show hosts. And he's talking about how vaccines are overblown and a scam and this new booster is something you shouldn't do and blah, blah, blah. And then it comes back to him and he goes, I didn't say any of that. And they didn't say any of that. That was a deep fake video of my appearance on the Today Show where they AI'd our voices and changed our mouths to look at, make it look like we were advocating for their special product that will keep you safe from vaccines. He goes, I didn't say a fucking word of that. And then a TikTok ended. And, uh, and and I won't lie, I got goosebumps. Like I got really weird goosebumps because I've, I mean, I look, I have online, so I've seen, and, and am I proud of this? No. Am I proud of having seen Natalie Portman get spit roasted? I'm not. Am I, am I proud of having seen uh, AOC involved in any number of terrible situations that she probably wouldn't be interested in? No. That just comes up sometimes when you go look for porn. They're like, hey, you, you have any interest in seeing Helen Mirren get railed? And you're like, well, I, well, I don't know what technology is doing these days. Holy fuck, look at Helen Mirren. Uh, it's just, and it's fucking weird and terrifying. Because another one too, dude, they did these deep fakes online of voices. Like there's, there's deep fakes of Biden doing rap lyrics and shit. And it sounds just like him. I mean, it, 
Because first of all, if you, have you ever seen Kyle Dunnigan do Bill Maher or Kyle Dunnigan do Joe Biden? It's fucking hysterical. But the Bill Maher one is dead on. Like, it totally sounds like, I don't know what he's doing, if he has any sort of effect on his voice, but if he's just doing it, he sounds exactly like him. And he'll do these things where he'll do like a weird face mapping where he looks like Bill Maher. Go subscribe to Kyle Dunnigan on Instagram. He's fucking hysterical. But uh, but man, it's it's just so fucking ridiculous what you can do now. So when I say it's dangerous, like these kids have all the facts, but also these lunatics also have these other videos that they see. And who the fuck knows what's real and what isn't? I don't. I got no clue. And that, And that's another reason that makes me just kind of fucking pull back. Because when you try to have a definitive position about something and then someone goes, ha ha, that wasn't ever a real thing. That was a fake robot who did that. And you're like, okay, looks like I hate the world and everything in it. You know what I mean? I've made it great. You fooled me. So this Republican debate was on and people are fucking t- tweeting about it. And I'm like, I don't even get it. These, these guys, first of all, they're all fucking dumb. Second of all, it's way, way too early to give a flying fuck about what anything says for a fucking debate. And uh, and three, uh, the guy who's going to win wasn't there. And and we know this. No matter what the fuck happens, because all these fucking guys, are they're all just trying to catch the eye of the emperor. That's it. They want to be the vice president. They want some cabinet position. The only one who wasn't was fucking Christie, who's decided he's going to be the one who goes against the grain and actually speaks truth to fake power, which is whatever. Christie's still a fuckhead because then they said, if Trump's the nominee, will you vote for him? And he said, yeah. <laughs> Even though he calls him a crook, he calls his kids crooks. He says he's this. He, he's fucking tearing him apart. But then he fucking says he'll vote for him. And you're like, all right, man, good for you. So it proves that they have no moral compunction of voting for a felon or a guy who's willing to be a someone who ruins this country or tears it apart. And look, I have my own opinions about whether this country's already come pre-ruined. I have no idea what you think. Um, but but at this deb- and then at this debate stage, there's this fucking hedge fund lunatic. The only advantage he has is he's 38 years old because you've got to stop putting these fucking redwood trees in office, man. You know, someone's got to cut Mitch McConnell in half and count the fucking rings. That guy keeps freezing at the microphone. And my favorite part is he, he he's frozen at the microphone twice. All right. He's gone up and he doesn't know what the fucking talk about. And on this last one, his fucking spokeswoman comes up. And she goes, do you have any other questions? Speak up. Like, yeah, OK, that's what it was. He couldn't hear us. And that's why he went straight up canned corn vegetable for fucking five seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, just standing there staring into the fucking distance unable to communicate it, you know this guy's this guy's having night terrors in the daytime this guy's got sleep paralysis at a podium fucking recognize this shit and send him home diane feinstein's being carting around in a wheelbarrow why the fuck is she even still in office step in and get these fuckheads out of there but the problem is then you look at the young congressman and it's all fucking wackadoos like fucking louis gomert and M and marjorie taylor green and bobert and all these assholes and they're they just and fucking they're just clowns Clowns to the left of me, everywhere, all over the fucking place. And that's why I say I have no interest or hope. I don't give a fuck, whatever. I don't I don't want certain communities to be hurt or marginalized. I support trans rights. I support women's right to choose. And I will always vote for those issues. Absolutely. Whoever's on the right side of those issues for me will get my vote every single time. I will never be one of those people who's like, eh, I shouldn't vote. It doesn't do any good. Meh. Well, you know what? It probably doesn't. I'll be honest with you. My vote probably doesn't count. I live in California, especially. I'm not going to affect anything, really. We do what we do here, and nobody else gives a fuck. All these other dumb fucks are like, you know, they they, <laughs> they hate California, and I'm like, good for you. Stay the fuck out. I don't care. Go. Go enjoy the backwoods of fucking South Carolina, you fucking nobody. Um, now, look, I don't want to impugn South Carolina. I'm sure there's a lot of lovely people there. I'm sure there's lovely people all over the place. But it's there's also shit heels. There's shit heels here in fucking California. If you go north past fucking on PCH on the way to San Francisco, you're going to drive through a ton of farm line that's just full of horse shit and dumb people. I mean, that's all the fucking is. Uh, and also, look, yes, if you live up there, you might be smart or cool. I'm not. That's the thing. You can't broad brush everybody. It's like not everybody in Alabama sucks. Not everybody in Texas sucks. But but they've gerrymandered it and fucked it around so enough to where the cool people don't get a say. And it's terrible. Florida sucks. I, we can all agree on that. Florida's a bad place. <laughs> um, Florida seems to be, that's just the, 
that's the holy land for idiots, right? That's just the fucking place. You would think Texas is, but no, I don't think Texas is too big to be that. I think Florida is the perfect size to just house all of the fucking clowns. It's the perfect big top under which to keep that fucking circus. Um, but in reality, if you were to divide these, if you were to divide it up and go, all right, let's all the dumb people get their own state, it would probably be like Maine. And I don't mean people in Maine now are, are terrible. I mean that like it would, that would be enough geographical topography to contain all of the idiots. They would live within Maine. Let's do that. Like, let's do escape from New York, but with Maine escape from Maine. And let's just put fucking anti-medicine, anti-book, fucking racist assholes who don't want women to have choice and are mean to fucking trans people. Let's give them Maine. Can we do that? And I know Maine is beautiful. That's the thing is you get, this is the trade-off. A lot of people from Maine are gonna be like, Hey, fuck. Oh, we love Maine. I get it. But isn't this the trade-off to save the rest of us? Just put these people in a fucking weird penal colony in Maine. And what's Maine's chief export? Judgment? I think so. So it's good. Those people fit right in. <laughs> I don't know. Don't you? They, what do they make there? Is that Syrup Town? No, that's other places. That's Vermont. Vermont is Syrup Town. Fucking Maine. I don't know what they. They lobsters, right? And and chowder. All right. And we can put the idiots in charge of chowder. Get let them all be in charge of fucking chowder. It's better than being in, in charge of running the country. Idiots are in Chowder Town. Let's go. You fucking handle our chowder. And but don't fuck up our clam chowder. We'll tell you that right now. Don't. You know what? If you go to Maine, here's the deal. If you go to Maine, idiots. And you take over and you run and you start running Chowder Town. No more red chowder. It's done. Only white clam chowder from now on. I don't even know why there is a, isn't there? It was that that's because isn't that a main version of clam chowder? Doesn't Maine have coffee milk too? Isn't that those assholes? Some weird shit. Or is that Rhode Island? I don't know. These fucking weird little states that are all full of wing nuts, drinking coffee milk and eating red chowder. Jesus Christ. Isn't red chowder would that was the defeated Superman, right? He, no, he actually it helped him. He needed the power of a red chowder, or else he would have no powers. Oh Lord! All right, uh, but this fucking debate happens, and so the only advantage this fucking dude has, and I'm gonna try to say his name. It's like Vivek Ramaswamy. Is that it, Ramaswamy? I don't know, Ramaswamy. I don't. I don't know how he says it, but I can tell you this. After the debate, everybody's like, oh, Vivek Ramaswamy is the fucking, that's the name on everybody's tongue, the tip of the tongue. He was the guy who stole the debate. And if you watched any of the debate, he was the guy you hated most. Like, if you're a normal person, you hated that fucking guy. Because, again, the only thing that he stood out was he's not, he's the old, because this is what everybody's looking for now. He's not your standard politician. He's not a politician. Right. He's just a hedge fund asshole who's screaming shit. And, you know, that same thing where he has an opinion and the next day they ask him about it and he changes his opinion. All of these dudes lie. They shift like fucking chameleons. They never tell the fucking truth. But even worse is this. Let me ask you this seriously. Vivek Ramaswamy. Again, the only advantage he has is he's 38 years old. But uh, Vivek Ramaswamy. Can you imagine any of these fucking tool bags voting for a Vivek Ramaswamy? Do you really think that's fucking happening? You know half of them think he's a character from a fucking uh, uh, Wes Anderson movie. There's no doubt. Vivek Ramaswamy, you're going to vote for that eye chart and put him in the fucking office? Please. That's not fucking happening with these people. Ridiculous. And then, second of all, we all know this. Even if he separates himself from the pack and he's the main guy, right? If even he becomes the front runner, if he ever looks like any sort of momentum is on his side, Trump is going to call him fucking vampire ramalama ding dong and then people will laugh at him and he's out of the race he's done forever he's done he's finished you know same with desantis when he called desantis like fucking ron de sanctimonious or, or meatball ron was the best he called him ron de sanctimonious and i was like that's not that's not trump quality but then meatball ron are you fucking kidding me that was the move and then and then look at this idiot and look desantis is all full of fucking self-inflicted wounds anyway he's walking around in fucking hip waders He's got fucking eight inch boots. The guy's like, it's like Gene Simmons is running for president. He's got fucking giant heels and he's trying to get votes because his wife wants him to. I truly believe this. I don't think he gives a fuck about being president. I think his wife desperately wants him to be president. And she's kind of the, the, the woman behind the curtain and she's making him do this shit because he looks like he is in physical pain. And I, I don't say that lightly. Like, it's not even like. You know, he he's uncomfortable. He truly looks like he hurts in his guts when he has to speak to crowds or when he has to be nice to people or talk to little kids. He just he makes these faces. And it became a running meme where he, he's trying to smile and he's not really. He just makes this pained grin. And I truly think because he sees, he, you know what? 
that dude would be happy being the king of Florida. And I don't know why he doesn't just take it. Just stay in Florida and make that your fiefdom. Just fucking do that and just fucking, you know, you're banning books. You're telling people black people don't exist, whatever the fuck, and people are actually voting for you. Why wouldn't you fucking stay there? You open yourself up to the rest of the nation and they're going to be like, who the fuck is this idiot? But the wife is back there pulling the levers and pulling the strings. And so he's got to go out there. He's got to go to Iowa and eat a fucking deep fried Twinkie and half grin at some fucking child who's getting fucking ketchup on his pants. You know what I mean? If you want to be president, there's a lot of stupid shit you got to do. And and he, you can see it. I think it physically hurts him. And I don't know. It might be a mental thing. Like maybe he's all fucked up in the head. Like maybe he's got anxiety. I don't even know. But he is a guy who has no interest in interacting with other fucking human beings. And, and he can't deliver a speech to save his fucking life. He always hits the wrong punch on the wrong words. And then he'll do these fucking weird halting laughs. I mean, he is just a guy. He is, he is a bag of fucking haunted ghosts. And he should be in, on a therapist's couch being talked to. I don't know anything about his childhood. I don't know anything you know about him other than he is... He's trying to appeal to the worst people, too. Like, you know, they, his campaign put out videos with like Nazi imagery in it, a black sun and stuff like that. And then, then they fired the guy who did it, but it doesn't matter. It's still out there. You know, you did it. And also, but I will say this to you though, we've come a long way as a country that a guy can put out a, a, a promotional video that features a Nazi black sun. And he's still in the race. And not only is he still in the race, he's probably a solid third or fourth right now behind fucking, uh, I chart and Trump. I mean, that's, you know, the just because of Florida and he's got the name or whatever the fuck. And then the wife is relentless and won't fucking stop. I don't know, but I don't know why anybody even fucking cared. People are watching it. And again, it's because everybody wants to get off their takes and get off their jokes. But then the political people have to watch it. And then they have to analyze it the next day. And they're like, well, you know, Vivek Shawarma Mara, he really fucking helped himself. Fucking Shamalama Ding Dong. He's running the fucking show. And it's like, I don't. All right. For now. And then he won't be. Because the second that fucking Trump extracts himself from the primordial ooze and drops two fucking wisecracks on this idiot and gives him a nickname, he's finished. He's fucking finished. But then Vivek will pivot and be like, I want to be a good VP for Donald Trump. Yeah, fucking awful. What a fucking country. What a mess. And and the other side, too. Look, I, I, I know because right now Republicans are like, oh, we're so mad at you, Schmitty. And I'm like, I hear that. However, let's let's uh, take a look at the Democratic side of things. Um you want to talk about cutting open redwoods and fucking checking out the rings? Biden, I saw him today talking about the fucking hurricane in Florida, and even he he even turns in slow motion like kind of that old man. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> He's just fucking shambling around like a fucking zombie out of The Walking Dead, and look, he's. He has his moments. Like, I, I don't think he has any sort of dementia or any fucking weirdness. I just think he's old and he's slow because that happens, man. You get to be fucking 88 or whatever the fuck. You're old and slow and you shouldn't be running this country. Like I said, Diane Feinstein is getting is getting dragged around by people and propped up in chairs to press buttons and shit. She's got a crypt to keep. What the fuck are you having her pass bills for? It makes no fucking sense. McConnell lights. Because McConnell, I, I wanted to finish my thought on that. You know, the woman thought she was like, speak up like that was it. Like he couldn't hear us. Sure, that was true. But if this dude has gone up like this twice on camera, all right, twice he's been being talked to and he's like, uh, uh, he's just fucking staring. He's got night paralysis, sleep paralysis, can't even talk. How often do you think it happens behind the scenes? How often do you think this is happening in his regular life when he's at dinner or when he's at, at a fu- in his office and his whole crew's around him? And then he fucking does that thing where he goes up and he's gone. And they're just like, all right, the boss is gone. He's gone. Bye bye. We'll see when he comes back. Like they're, they're not going to tell anybody about it. And then the fucking, the, what was it? The, the doctor today, <laughs> the white house doctor said that he had lightheadedness. I'm like, uh, is that what we're calling it now? Okay, cool. Uh, because it sure looked to me like he had drifted off the fucking planet. That's how light his head was. It floated up to the goddamn moon for about two minutes. Then he came back down and realized it was a room full of fucking reporters. What a mess. And Biden's kind of the same way. Like he hasn't gone up, but he is he is a dude who's just he shouldn't be anywhere near the fucking presidency. But they're going to run him again. And they've already said there's there's not going to be primaries. There's not going to be debates. They said he's the guy. The Democrats are putting all all of their eggs in this unbelievably ancient basket. And I don't know what that means. I don't. And, and is there no young person who can step up? Is there no youth at all? You know, because I keep hearing that Kamala is gonna, is the next in line or whatever the fuck. And I don't, 
Uh, I look, I have uh, people I respect who tell me that she's doing a good job and good for them. Uh, I don't know a fucking thing she's done. I guess she's given some speeches. I know she sent out some devastating tweets. Uh, but and again, vice presidents don't really do fucking anything anyway. Pence didn't do a fucking thing. And that guy's running again, too. What the fuck is that guy doing? This fucking walking Gideon Bible out of the shittiest hotel you ever stayed in in your fucking life. And he's going ahead and giving some stupid fucking he, he's his opinion on abortion. That fucking haircut. What a fucking nobody. What a country. I, you know, again, in a country that churns out the most charismatic musicians and movie stars and celebrities you could ever imagine. And also gives voice to a lot of uncharismatic fucking whistleheads. You would think that there would be one uniting fucking dead zone politician who could step up and make everybody. And I know who it is. It's Trump. You're going to say it's Trump, but he's also 80 or whatever the fuck. And, and he's just terrible. But don't, don't the Democrats have a guy like that? Don't the Democrats have a, have a, a Trump like figure that they could, but it wouldn't, but I don't want to, the thing is I don't want it to be a cult. I don't want it to be anything like that. You could say Bernie, I guess, but Bernie's another one. He's 8,000 years old. What the fuck, man? There's gotta be some, could we put some kid in the lab for the next fucking 25 years and venture and candidate him into being the guy who's supposed to run the show. And I know you're thinking it's adorable that I think in 25 years, we're still going to have elections. I totally get that. I, I don't think it's going to happen either. I don't know what the fuck, man. I, I just, it's, I find myself with, with, as you know, I've, I've been like this for years now. No hope. I don't have any hope for what, what this is going to be. And so I just want to, I'm going to sit back and laugh at it because I think it's just dumb. Uh, but of course, as, as, some of you will say, and and it's totally true, that's my privilege to sit back and watch it because I'm a white guy. I mean, what the fuck are they going to do with me? You know what I mean? It's not like I'm not a, a person who's constantly under scrutiny for the life that I live and uh, and has to pay the price, and I, and I get that. So that's why I say I can give voice to my concerns and I can vote to keep people safe. I will do the best I can. That's why, look, because I, look, I don't, I think Biden's a fuckhead. Um, I don't get it. I don't, I mean, he seems like a genuinely nice, good man, but he's too old. That's, I guess he's not even a fuckhead. I, I take that back. It's, that's strong. I don't disagree with him in any wrong or, or any strong way. Uh, he's just too old. He shouldn't be doing this job. He's the, and, and whether he's a figurehead, whatever you want to call him, I don't, I don't know that to be true. I, I think he's still lucid and he has ideas and he has policies. And I think his wife does a lot of string pulling too. Um, but at the same time, I, I think his heart is in the right place for the things that I support. So, of course, I'm going to vote for him. I wish there was a younger person who was willing to talk more about other terrible things that are going on in the world. And I wish people would stop giving money to the fucking cops. I don't understand that in L.A. Everybody said, you got to vote. That's because right, you want to talk about voting. This woman, Karen Bass, everybody's got to go. to. Oh, my God, you got to vote for Karen Bass, mayor of L.A. Mary, you got to vote for Karen Bass. Karen Bass is the one you have to do it because there was some Republican and Democrats clothing trying to run as well. And they're like, he's going to get in there and fuck everything up. Vote for Karen Bass. A lot of celebrity people that I know vote for Karen Bass. Karen Bass is the one fundraisers. Uh, I voted for Karen Bass. She was the Democrat. She seemed to be the choice. So I did it. And uh, she just voted for like the largest police budget in the history of the city. And and, and she approved it. And uh, look, I, I, I have police officers listening to this very show. I'm not painting cops with a broad brush. What I am saying is perhaps cops don't need aircraft carriers. That's all I'm saying. All I'm saying is perhaps, you know, again, police, they have challenges that I could never imagine and, and fears that I will never experience. And I get that. And it's a difficult and, and incredibly taxing job on you and your family. And I could only wish you all safety. And I hope you will all get to approach every situation in a way where you do your job safely and the person you interact with also is safe and everybody's happy and, and lives wonderfully together after kumbaya one another and, and intersecting our arms and doing hands across America. Yes, I wish all of those things are true. And I also think, and I don't think it's a controversial thought, that police don't need killer robots. It just, it just seems to me, maybe, that there's a, there's a, a between, there's an in-between there where we could maybe bring in some more, I don't know, some more mental health professionals or people who can go ahead and help with a homeless situation because homeless situation is a ridiculous thing. And see, the more I talk about these things, the more I risk making somebody angry. And the more I talk about these things, uh, the more I realize there are problems that are unsolvable in this world. And it sends me reeling when I think about it. 
like we I was talking about homelessness with someone. Uh, this made me laugh. I, um, this is an older person. And uh, they are not they were not familiar with downtown L.A. They hadn't seen it. And we were in the car driving through downtown L.A. And they were shocked to see all of the tents and all the tent cities and all the people sleeping on the street and all of these terrible things. And uh, and <laughs> this person said, uh, boy, it's just you would think there would be something. And I said, I go, yes, but I, I feel that the problem is is almost unsolvable because it has to take a lot of money. There, you would really need a lot of money and an, and an unbelievably detailed plan to fix it. And it is based in helping people and helping people doesn't get a lot of votes. And she says, well, you know, it wouldn't be that hard. All you should do, you could just build like you could take the cheapest materials and just build like a building and everyone gets a cubicle, you know, like and when you're in an office and just give everyone like a cubicle with a door and then they could stay there and there would be like a, a shower, like a community shower that they could use and it would get them off the streets. They could stay in their cubicles and then they could all use the community shower and and, you know, do whatever they needed to do. <laughs> and I said, I think you just invented a jail. Uh, and uh, she kind of looked at me with a scans and I said, uh, no, I understand what you're saying. You're trying to get housing and I under- and that makes sense. But to put all of these people in one building where they each get a cubicle and a door and then a community shower seems a lot more like incarceration than actual help. And uh, because this woman is over 70 years old, that was the end of the conversation. Because what am I going to have some deep fucking seated conversation about the homeless problem? Because, again, the two of us in my Toyota Camry are not going to solve it, especially not in that moment. But it exists. And it's I it's just getting worse and worse. And, and, you know, climate change, these these people who are against it, they're like, ah, come on, that's bullshit. All right. I mean, we had a hurricane in Los Angeles. I, I don't know. And then during during the hurricane, we had an earthquake. Now, the earthquake's fine. Uh, but what made me laugh, though, was in the hurricane was, you know, we're in the middle of the hurricane, and it's raining, and then the earthquake hits. And the earthquake showed up like a guy whose girl was talking to somebody else at the bar. You know, I mean, the earthquake was like, yo, 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 this, no, no, this is my place. This is, yeah, yeah, she belongs to me. The earthquake telling the hurricane to leave California the fuck alone. It made me laugh. Um, I, I, you know, we had a hurricane in California. And then... Uh, you know, I've been gone a while. We had, we had two weeks of over a hundred degree temperatures right now. It's 99 outside, but I mean, Chicago, Chicago was 105. It was 90 at night at one in the morning. That's some fucking Texas shit and humid as fuck. And I, I'm not, look, it's above my pay grade to speak to what climate change is going to do or has done, but you cannot deny that the world has changed. We don't get a fall here in Los Angeles anymore. We get long summer. And then we kind of summer kind of goes almost directly into winter where it's not it's just it drops drastically and there's no I mean look we get the leaves are falling and shit like that but we don't get any real extended period of like 60 to 75 degrees like we used to. Um it's it's an interesting thing. We just we just don't have a, an autumn. And uh and I don't know if that's happening all over the country. But it's it's you know, we'll have 100 degree temperatures into October here. And and that's just the way it is. That's and it hasn't it's been that way now for f- 5 7 years and it's just getting worse. And do I know what to do about it? I don't. Just like I don't know what to do about the homeless problem. Unless there's some way we could take all the homeless people and construct them into some sort of meat shield that would keep all of the the cathode and UV rays from reaching the earth. Is there a way to do that? Can we build a homeless person meat shield around the globe? I'm not sure, but you know what? We have to think outside the box on this. And that idea is as viable as anything I've already heard. I think homeless person meat shields surrounding the globe. And what we will just, uh, we'll stick them together with fucking uh, gorilla glue and give them sandwiches. They're fine up there. You can still sleep. Uh, might have the hot back thing happening. Oh, uh, nobody wants a hot back. <laughs> Actually, homeless person meat shield might be the name of my fucking fantasy team. I got to go ahead and think that. Let me write that time code down. Hold on a second. Homeless person meat shield. Uh, that'll be a fun name for my fantasy football team. I know you're broken up too, wondering about my fantasy baseball teams. Uh, last year I won my national league, which was great. Uh, and this year I'm in last place. And it's a long story. Uh, I had injury problems before the season even started. My keepers were hurt. <clears throat> and then 
uh, I, I made a dumb trade early. And in my haste to make this trade, I forgot to include a player I wanted to get. And this guy scooped it up right away. And I couldn't go. I made a mistake because that's just dumb. Uh, and in the other league, the mixed league, uh, once again, I drafted a team that I loved. I absolutely loved this team. And uh, I did. I underperformed all year. And right now I'm in fourth place. But I'm I'm 17 points away from third. Like I have no shot at the money. Um, but I might win strikeouts. Who knows? You don't care. But that look, there you go. I can't even win my fantasy baseball leagues. So expecting me to solve fucking the climate change problem or homelessness is is absolutely a non-starter. I can tell you that. It doesn't mean I don't have opinions about these things. But at the same time, I, I prefer to sit back in a barca lounger and just kind of laugh at the futility of people thinking they can somehow block the sun. Uh, you know, I... I was I used to recycle all the time. I think I told you this. I used to recycle, and I loved it because you know you get fucking ten bucks here and there when you bring back all the bottles. I drink. I used to drink a ton of bottled water, and uh, Dave Anthony was like, um, you know that that does nothing really, and uh, he he mentioned that there's like like I forget what company, but there's like you know possibly you know uh, who killed all of the people in India. Bhopal carbide. I don't know what the fuck. God damn it! He, I used to be good at these kinds of things. But one day, like one hour, one hour of the pollution they put into the air neutralizes like 10,000 people recycling. You, 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 I, you know, what do you do to that? The world is the world. And there's so many. And I know I look, I'm not saying don't try to change it. I'm I'm ready for all of these people. Although there's some I dude, I saw a clip the other day of PETA people trying to take away a homeless guy's dog. Did you see this clip? Dude, don't don't ever go on the Internet anymore because there's all these fucking dumb clips of some guy getting hit by a fucking car who shouldn't be hit by a car. I saw a dude shoot six guys. It's just fucking brutal. It's a bad place, the internet. And yet, there I am. Uh, I, I see AOC blowing guys because they deep faked her face. Um, but fucking, I saw some some dude the other day on the street. He's a homeless guy. And these like PETA people, activists, came to take his dog because they claimed like he wasn't taking care of it or whatever the fuck. I'm like, dude, what the... Step the fuck off. Like, who the fuck are you guys? Go save a whale, right? Go full, go sail your boat because the homeless guy doesn't have fucking zip guns. He's not going to be able to fight back. Go fight the Japanese dudes who are killing all the whales and shit or dolphins or whatever the fuck they're doing. Go fight those people. Or go go to a slaughterhouse. Uh, it, and by the way, if you want to take over a slaughterhouse now, PETA, it's not going to be a problem because they're hiring 11-year-olds. I don't know if you've seen this in Iowa and shit. Iowa and Arkansas, they've lowered the the employee thing to like 13 and you and 13 year olds can serve liquor in these states what the dude here's what they want it's so transparent what people want these terrible people anyway they want a country of uneducated assholes who have to start working when they're young and then can't ever retire they're just creating a worker class a ridiculous and i know i look i might sound like fucking graham at this fucking point i don't know the difference is that i'm not you know i i i just see it happening and i'm just i'm i'm like the the rape victim in Bobby Knight's fucking anecdote to, to Connie Chung. Just sit back and enjoy it. I, mean, I can't fix this shit. I want to. I'd love to. Like I said, I'll press a button and check a box. But what the fuck am I going to do? Am I going to put on a black turtleneck and go out and fight somebody? I, I inevitably I, look because here's the thing. Inevitably, I'm going to have to do that just to get canned goods at some point. I don't want to go out in a fucking turtleneck and a beanie to go fight people for somebody's fucking right to live. Because inevitably, I'm going to have to wind up doing that just to get fresh celery, for fuck's sake. This country is fucking swirling down the toilet. Vegetables and canned goods will be the first to go because they know. But they're trying to keep, you know, when they, they ban books, they want to tell people about the past. They're, they're, they're trying to raise. I saw that fucking Nikki Haley chick is like, we got to raise the retirement because uh, 65 to retire was when the life expectancy was a certain age. Well, now life expectancy has gone up. We should totally raise the raise the the retirement age and i'm like you know it's always rich fucking people who want to do that right there's no there's no guy who's been toiling away in a factory or a coal mine for 31 years and he's 64 and he goes you know what what if we extended the retirement age by 10 more years and i, I had to wait to get that medicaid i've been paying for 31 fucking years that's the deal is they just don't want to give you your money they don't want to give you your social security they don't want to give you your medicaid they want to fucking keep it they want to fucking keep it when they talk about making you start work early so you can say, oh, then you start paying into it because that's why they can take your money when you're younger. And then when you extending you, when you get older, you won't get your money because you still got to work till you're 75. 
and then they don't give it to you. They just fucking keep it and use it for whatever the fuck they want to do. And here's the thing. This seems transparent to me. This seems like something that everyone should just be like, hey, as Fox, we see through what you're trying to do here. But there are people who will still vote for them. There are people who will still agree with them. I don't know, man. And I know you'll tell me, well, Biden gave a lot of money to the military. You're absolutely right. It's fucking stupid. I don't get it. I don't agree with any of these assholes. I, I vote now for... Here, here's my three main issues. Uh, I vote for, for, for reproductive rights. I vote for the safety for all minorities and, and uh, uh, you know, trans people, racism against any policies that would be marginalizing or hurting anyone in the population. And I always vote for the rabbit to get the tricks. That's it. That's those are that's my platform, everybody. Uh, <laughs> I just I because I don't. And also because I don't understand half the shit when they're, they're just like, hey, you know, we got to send this money over to fucking Singapore for whatever the fuck. Fine. Send money to Singapore. It's this thing because here's the deal, too. They the people who are mad that we're sending money to Ukraine. OK, like I don't I don't give a shit about that. My whole life we've sent money to everybody. We've sent money to Israel. We've sent money to fucking, you know, to to South Korea. We've sent money everywhere all the time. But now these people who are like in favor of Russia, like they're backing Russia and they're they're in, invading Ukraine. And well, they're oh, no, there are Nazis in Ukraine. Well, wait, there. No, there are Nazis over here. And then and because the again, there's always got to be a Hitler. I said this on a previous show. There always has to be a Hitler. And they, they that's the way they justify going in to get their deal. And and uh, and I don't understand it. I mean, you heard fucking dummy DeSantis is like. He would invade Mexico because the cartels are killing people by sending drugs over the border. I'm like, well, he, you might want to read up on the cartels and who they did business with for a very long time. <laughs> Possibly. I think it rhymes with uh, CIA. That's who it rhymes with. And look, I'm not exposing secrets. I don't. I'm not one of these dudes who's like, just man, look under the rug and you'll see the maggots and the fucking the, all the bugs scurry. And then I don't give a shit about it. Send money to Ukraine. People are fucking dying. That's the thing. I don't want I don't want there to be war. I don't. I don't want nobody should die. There shouldn't even be borders. There shouldn't even be Ukraine and Russia. There should be earth. All this bullshit is so stupid. I was secure the borders. Why? Because this person was was unlucky enough to be born into poverty in Honduras. And now they're trying to come here to get a better life because there is opportunity. And also, you want to make 13 year old kids work in slaughterhouses. Why the fuck don't you bring some people from Honduras over and try to help them out? Give them houses. Here's what you do. You build a building that has cubicles with doors and a possibly a community shower for all the Hondurans. What if you do that? (laughs) That's a good plan, right? Jesus fucking Christ, man. So I, I see these things and I and I'm old, by the way. I, I you know what? We missed my birthday. I I. That was one of the arbitrary days where I'm like, you know what? I'll do a birthday show. I'll do this show. I'll do that show. And I just kept, you know, I kept talking myself out of it, staring at the microphone. Sometimes I'd sit down, I'd set it up, I'd open Audacity, I'd, be like, <clears throat> I'd start the show five or six times. And then I'd go, well, you know what? I should probably go over here and eat something or I should go watch a show and then I'll be inspired. It's so dumb. I can't explain to you who I am and what's going on inside me these days uh, or all days, quite frankly. Um... But I'm here today, and I will be here next week, and I will be here. You know what? I may. Here's the thing. The show, you know, it was coming out once a week, and I always called it episode this, year this. Um, but part of me is like, why Why does it have to be that way? Why couldn't I just, I because rec- another thing, you know, I put this pressure on myself where I'm like, you got to do a three hour fucking show, especially when I've been off for fucking two months. Like you got to come out with a thick guns blazing. And if it's bad and people fucking hate it, then you're going to be like, oh no. So you got to go out and you got to do three hours. You got to do four hours. You got to fucking really kill it. You got to fucking grab them and hold their attention and make sure, you know, it's, and it's all this weird pressure. And then that's the, the perfect is the enemy of the good. The perfect is the enemy of the great. And there's a couple of quotes that I saw. Uh, I don't have them handy, so I'm going to try to to paraphrase them. Um, Someone was like, one of the quotes I saw was, you know, you you can't punish yourself for what you've done up to this moment. And you have to be kind to yourself and give yourself empathy for what you've done and just move forward now with the things you can and want to do. 
and I can do this and I want to do this and I can't I can't say, well, this is the punishment show and I'm sorry. And so it's got to be four hours, whether you like it or not. I'm going to overstuff you like a goddamn turkey with bits and material and blah, blah, blah. Um, Because because look, I'll I'll tell you this. This is completely true. I glance down now and uh, we're like an hour and 20 minutes, right? Uh, I haven't talked about one thing that I was going to talk about. Like where I because I even told myself, I was like, well, I don't even know what the fuck I'm going to say. I haven't done this. What the fuck am I going to do? I don't have anything to talk about. And now here we are. And uh, I'm a buck 20 in and I I haven't covered anything that I've done in the past two months or any really not really anything. And that's a crazy thing. Uh, and, and, you know, part of me feel because I could do I part of me feels like, you know what, uh, I got to really fucking I have started to think about with this with live performances, too. You know, I did live performances. The first time I went to San Francisco, the second night, people had to leave early because the trains were going to stop running. I was talking so fucking long. Uh, I did a show in Atlanta that was three and a half hours long. I did a show in St. Louis. It was three hours and 45 minutes. I went and saw Oppenheimer, and it's almost three hours. And it made me laugh because in my brain, I'm just like, I Jesus, I made people. I, I did another hour on top of Oppenheimer. Not even a joke. Like, literally, when I was in fucking St. Louis. And that's a good thing and a bad thing. Because as I'm considering now going back on the road, as I'm considering getting back out there and telling you stories, I don't, I don't know if you would have the time to sit with me for three hours anymore. You know what I mean? I, that was a, perhaps that was a, just a comet, just a one-time thing. That was the Haley's Comet of me going on the road that people would be willing to give me their attention for that long. Truly the best $20 ticket you've ever bought in your life. Watching me fucking grind my guts out for three and a half hours. Uh, and so I put pressure on myself to do this. The other quote that I saw was, and this is this was an important one, because again, one of the reasons why I've stopped myself from doing these shows and stopped myself from coming back and doing a podcast or twitching or twitch, I had technical problems. That was another thing too. That was a big deal. But I've, I think I've got those squared away now. But one of the things that kept me off the microphone, and I've talked about this before, and, and so I apologize, I'm, I'm just rehashing, but we're, if you're new, which I doubt, uh, we're catching up, uh, was that everybody had a microphone. And I can't stand hearing from anybody. Like, other than, you know, my friends are entertaining, there's, there's plenty of movies and shows that I find entertaining, but my point is like, you know, in social media or on TikTok or on Facebook or whatever, everybody has this voice and they're shouting to the rafters about everything. And I just, it's this cacophony that I want to fucking avoid. And then in my brain, I go, well, then why are you even, why are you adding to it? If you don't like hearing all of these people espouse their opinions and talk shit and say the dumb things that they do or put themselves up playing a fucking kazoo in the rain or whatever the fuck else, if you can't stand those things, like you just said, like I alluded to earlier, when someone's got a fucking 10-minute video and I just need a 45-second answer, it drives me out of my fucking skull. Um, And so I project those feelings onto you guys where I'm like, well, you don't want to fucking hear me talk for fucking three hours it just seems fucking anti uh, antithetical to what i'm you know to entertaining it almost becomes a chore at that point it becomes an arduous task uh because i feel that everybody who posts their i see their stand-up clips or i see them i i without going into detail look i know a lot of stand-up comedians i follow a lot of comedians on twitter there's comedians i don't know that i that i see their stuff there are comedians who now because we've, they've been taught the algorithm you got to game the algorithm you got to reach out You've got to go ahead and engage people by putting out one minute clips of your stand up, a minute and 20 seconds, you know, whatever. Or, you know, comedian smashes heckler. All of this whole game has changed. It's all about getting eyeballs and attention. And by doing that, you've got to put out constant stuff. It can be a clip of your stand up or it can be you saying, oh, man, I had the worst sandwich today. Like and, and I just I, I become it's this tidal wave that has drowned me over and over again. And I hide from it. I just pu- I pull away. And I convince myself not to participate by putting out my content because I'm like, you know what? Everybody in the world has content. Who the fuck needs my content? There's plenty of content out there. But unfortunately, that flies in the face of what I want to do for a living and what I'm best at. And that's this. It's talking. Again, as I said, we, we're, we're a buck 20 in and I haven't even talked about any of the fucking stuff I was going to tell you about. It's ridiculous. And I'm by myself, which I love doing. I, I love this. And again... When I'm off microphone, 
I will somehow, I have to fight off the guy who tells me this wasn't good or tells me you, I don't love this. You know what I mean? Because here we are, we fucking, we're flying. I think I said some funny shit. Who the fuck knows? I have no idea. I think I did. I know there's enough people out there. And I, look, and I know there's people who have left. There are people who are angry. I get that, man. I totally understand it. I have given people every reason in the world to forget me. When you give people a reason to ignore you, they will. And by not being in the forefront and trying to stand out and, and giving people what they want or hope for or need, although nobody needs to hear from me probably, uh, you, you let them, because there's so much else out there, they'll go find something else. And also, I have a sport mindset where like, I'm competing. Like, I'm competing with Conan O'Brien. I'm competing with Jimmy Pardo. I'm competing with, unfortunately, now all five hosts of the late night shows who are now going to have a podcast. See that? And look, that has nothing to do with me or my life. People will find room for whatever they're going to find room for. But the fact that Fallon and Seth Meyers and Colbert and Kimmel and I think of and another guy who I don't know. I can't remember. It's not Corden. Somebody else. There's one other one other person. They're doing a podcast together now. And I guess they're raising money for their staffs and all that kind of stuff. But also it makes me go, why don't you each just give a million dollars to your staff? Do you really want to sit down? But it also lets them be creative. And who am I to tell them they can't be creative? Who am I to tell somebody they can't play a kazoo in the rain? Who am I to tell somebody they can't set up a ukulele in their garage? I, I, and that's what I'm saying is it's like I'm constantly at odds with myself where I'm like, this is all fucking stupid. And then I'm like, who the fuck are you to decide whether it's stupid? Because people will listen to your show and you're talking about dumb shit and they're like, this is stupid. And I'm like, no, I'm not stupid. I'm fucking hilarious. I'm a goddamn genius. And then they're like, no, you're not. You're just like everybody else. And that's the thing is it's like, it goes back to when I took the IQ test. I don't want to be, it's, it's, you know, genius or R word is what I said back then. I can't say it now. Uh, I can say it now. I just don't want to, you know, I don't want to hurt anybody. Um, so. Uh, that's what I mean. I mean, we're, we're well into this show and I've not talked about anything I want to talk about. And it reminds me that I'm good at this. And it reminds me that I might be interesting or funny. It reminds me, you know what I mean? It's these, these little scraps that I feed myself. But then when I walk away and I post this, I, my brain is like, all right, well, that's out of the way. And, and you know, nobody's going to like it. And you probably don't have to do it. It's just, I don't know why. I don't know why I don't. All I can do is fight through. So my point in, in the greater scheme of things is sometimes I'll just sit down and record if I just want to record. It, it might not be every Thursday. It, you might get a show on Thursday and you might get a show on Saturday. You, you might get, I, there won't be, look, you're, you've been very kind to this point about not having a set schedule. But what I'm saying to you is it won't be a set schedule of radio silence. It'll be a set schedule where maybe, maybe I put out a 30 minute show or maybe I put out a 15 minute thing. And then and what I'm trying and like, I'm willing to hear your suggestions on this. Part of me thinks that might be good stuff to do on YouTube live streams or, you know, because the Twitch streams are good for gaming or talking or whatever, too. I'm, I'm trying to figure out the best way to present myself and to stop fucking telling myself I shouldn't be doing it. I have to take advantage of these opportunities. Uh, I've already done so much damage. I have. I, I, I recognize that. And, and if anybody here is listening to this, please know how much you mean to me. Now, I've said this in the past. Doesn't mean it's not true now. If I don't do a show for two months, it's, it's not because I don't think as much of you as I should. It's because I don't think nearly as much of me as I should. And I mentioned two quotes and the other quote, I'm going to paraphrase it was, if you're sitting there and not doing what you're supposed to be doing, please know there are a hundred people right now doing exactly what you do and doing it worse and being told by people that they're great. And I see that in practice every day. Like I said, comedians will put out these clips of a minute to 90 seconds and and there won't be a joke in them. Now, certainly there are comedians who are brilliant and you'll see their stuff, but there are comedians because they've just been taught they have to engage people. It's a way to engage people. We got to get you going. You got to watch this video. You got to listen to me here. Here's a post. I ate a sandwich. All of those things. And I've I've found no truck with that. I've felt like, why do you constantly want me in your face? I don't need to give you every waking thought. I'm not Fozzy fucking bear. You know, I don't want to walk a walk you guys with some, ha ha, look at this, what I saw, a noodle, you know, nobody fucking cares. 
I posted it. I posted a thing the other day, like I was in a grocery store. I just put it on Facebook. It was a cereal. And I thought it was a funny thing to say. And it was struck me as funny. And I put it up. And I need to do more of that. But I also don't need to do it every hour on the goddamn hour. And I also want to avoid this thing. And, and look, I, you know, I even have friends who do this. So saying this might be a bit, you know, a bit much. But, but Facebook especially has become this fucking remember when factory. Just this endless. Because here's the thing. There's a difference in like entertainment nostalgia is one thing. Whenever he's like, oh, remember this show or this show premiered in or remember that movie or all that stuff. Oh, and all of that is whatever. It's got its place. I don't love it, but I understand it. But everyone, not everyone, but the people who are engaging on Facebook, a lot of them are involved in personal nostalgia. And what I mean by that is they'll put up stuff that they did five years ago, some trip they took to Italy or some anywhere they went or whatever, or some occasion with their kid or, or even a joke they made. And I've done that. I've actually reposted jokes that have come up in my memories. And I stopped because in my brain, it's just, it's this, to me, it is such a nursing home way of thinking. Even, even if you're young, if you're like, oh man, remember this four years ago? No, I don't. That was your life. I, I don't know anything about your life other than what you put up here. And I'm sure four years ago, maybe I saw you went to Italy or whatever the fuck. Uh, but it doesn't mean anything to me. But because people feel they need to engage, they need to be seen, they need to be heard, they need... Like, I, I barely care about your present. I don't give a fuck about your past. And I'm sure that sounds harsh. I don't mean it to be super harsh. But I also say these these people... If, if you're doing that, and and this coming from me, this may sound ridiculous, but if you if you are constantly engaging in and shining a spotlight on your past, doesn't that prohibit you from moving forward to a future? And I've been frozen in amber for a very long time, and it's because I've convinced myself. Well, you shouldn't, there's nothing, you don't, people don't want you to move forward, but also it, that ties into my laziness and my anxiety and all sorts of different things. They're all there and they've, they've kept me from engaging because I've, I've thought of bits or I've thought of jokes, but I don't post when I don't do a show because then people are going to be like, why are you posting jokes when you're not doing a fucking show? Which I understand. I get it. People, people get angry. They, they're not happy if I don't do a show and, and other, but even worse is some people just ignore it and they forget who the fuck I am. But if you are spending your time, because this thing where people are like, you know, remember when we did this in school? Remember when we did that? What's your What was your favorite song on your birthday and when you were 13? You know, all that. It's just this fucking relentless. It's like going through a fucking city dump and just picking up old memories. And... I, again, I know that sounds harsh. And, and if you do these things, if you want to it, please celebrate your past or your nostalgia, I'm just talking about how it makes me feel. And it's probably because I've never accomplished the things I was supposed to accomplish. I never worked hard enough and I didn't carve out the life that I thought I would. And I'm still scrambling. I mean, I, I have a job. I'm not going to go into it. <laughs> but other than Uber, I now have a job. Uh, I'll talk about it on the next show because again, uh, I don't, you know, I, I could very easily talk for another hour because <laughs> again, we've really not talked about anything up to this point, but we'll call this, I, you know what? This shouldn't even be an episode really of the show. This is just, we're back. But my point is there, I'm going to be, I'm going to be more prominent in your lives to a certain extent as prominent as you'll let me be but i mean i'll be back on twitch today you know this is thursday morning i'm recording this uh because i had my friend walker come over and we went and i think we solved all the bugs that we needed to solve so i'll be back on twitch weekdays uh i'll be recording i i think i need to do some youtube streams because i'm not doing anything with that channel i need to do more stuff on patreon and, and while we're talking about that real quick, let me throw out, you know, this is a crazy thing, but in two months I haven't done a show and I, I, you know, the Patreon is, is there and you guys support me and it's incredible, 
But uh, uh, let me just mention my friend Manny Mo, who is uh, an unbelievably kind gentleman. Uh, he's the king of kings, as I've often told him. And uh, he supports the Twitch channel. He supports me on Patreon. And he supports me in a, in a really crazy way on Patreon. And, uh, and, I, and I sit here and I don't, I, I just, I'm stuck and wheels spinning and, and going, well, people don't want to hear this or they don't want to do this or maybe they don't want to do that or uh, they're going to go away. And, uh, and then Manny Mo stepped up the other day and he, it's, I got the email and it said, Manny Mo has changed his pledge on Patreon. I'm like, oh, fuck. Because Manny's been here from the beginning. I met Manny at PodFest. He, he's just an incredible presence when it comes to this show. He's been supportive from the jump. And so I, you know, I got to go look at the email to see what we've, you know, what he's downgraded to. And instead, he actually upgraded his Patreon. And <laughs> I, I got choked up because because it it for me and I and I'm not there's probably some weird subtext here of where money equals love and I don't mean that at all but support equals love uh the fact that he still cares after I haven't done anything and the fact that any of you are still here listening the fact that anyone still cares about me or what I say or what I do when I've been so negligent and it's shocking to me and I, I love you Manny and I love all you guys because uh, <laughs> you you've convinced me you always convince me you reach out uh, my friend uh, my friend Jillius they reach out and they've told me like listen just just do it just fucking do it we love you we're not going anywhere we want this we want you we support you and I, I screenshot them and I read them and I read those quotes that I just mentioned to you, and I, I know these things to be true. It's the, but there is, there is a real fucked up evil Wolverine in my head who every time I try to approach the, the, the love that people have given me, he just fucking carves me up and goes, you don't deserve that. Nah, man, what the fuck? What do you think you're doing? Uh, and tells me I'm not good or I'm not, I'm not this or I'm not that or whatever. And, and then, like I said, that ties into my <clears throat> laziness, my anxiety, my friend, our, my friend, Mary Beth booked me for a cameo. And I, I don't even know if it was good, quite frankly, I got to be honest with you. Cause I haven't, I haven't done, I haven't been speaking. You know what I mean? So then I think that public speaking, like I'm not good at it anymore. <laughs> so I hope it was good. Uh, um, my friend, my friend Anthony, his wife reached out to me. There's, there's, uh, I, I won't say names, but they live in Ireland, and I, I gave a speech for their wedding. They were very kind to include me in that, uh, and so then, I, I, then for their their first anniversary, I believe it was, but then they just had their tenth anniversary. So that'll show you they've been a part of my life for at least ten years, and uh, and she reached out and she goes, "Can you give a note to 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 him for our tenth anniversary?" The fact that they would still care, the fact they would still want that is is incredible to me. And all of these things, believe me, they they all go into me and they provide me with the fulcrum. They provide me with the platform I need to come back and and be who I'm supposed to fucking be. And they the Wolverine eats them. The fucking you know, they get burned alive inside. But but I. But I recognize those things, and they're amazing to me when people still care. I, I have, there's a guy named Adam. Adam started the fan club page on Facebook, the Westside 86 Jokers page. Uh, he's been around forever. And he and I have been talking about some stuff, and just the very fact that he would be even interested in in me as a performer or anything going forward is is just such a shock. He's texted me before. He's told me these things. And the thing is, I also don't want to make you guys tired of of telling me that, hey, man, we're in your corner. You know what I mean? Like, But you can only be in a guy's corner so often before he has to fucking do something. And I've done how many shows like this now? I know. I know. And, I, you know, it's funny. I want to convince myself. I want to I want to I want to fool myself into thinking that this has been going on for like a year. It's not, man. It's been going on for like three years. The delays are getting longer. Um, you know, and and look, there was. <laughs> There was a life event that that happened that 
really knocked my dick in the dirt. And it was it went on for a few years, and and I was able to kind of, I I came out of it, but it didn't mean I came out unscathed, and that's another thing that has completely fucked me and my confidence up. Um. So all I can do is try. And and I will try, and I want to be more prominent. I want to be. I want more podcasting. There may be and there may be audio like those standalone stings. I called them like these really quick ones. I might use this as a as a radio station instead of as a. I always say more more of a book than a movie. Well, now maybe I'll put out some short stories. You know what I mean? Like I mean, I've always looked at this show. I've always said it's more of a book than a movie. That's why it was always titled Episode Eight, Year Fourteen. I wanted it titled like the chapters of a book. I've always wanted that from the beginning of this show. That's what I was imagined to be. It's more of a book than a movie because it's ongoing. A movie has a plot and it has an ending. There's a three act structure, a book. I mean, I'm writing fucking my own personal war and peace. And the very fact that you're still reading is astonishing to me. And it, and it, and it makes me by turns incredibly happy and also incredibly sad that I have let you down to the, the in the, the capacity that I have. So my point is going forward, I want to do more streams. I want to be on YouTube. I, you know, I always said I have a list. I have plans. I've, you know, that was always part of it. I had an idea for a thing called last night at Schmitty's of giving this, maybe speaking it will speak it into existence. And every day I was going to do a YouTube video that just told you what I watched the night before. Uh, whether it was an episode of Kojak, whether it was a movie, whether it was a sporting event, it was going to be an everyday YouTube show called Last Night at Schmitty's. And then I'm like, well, nobody wants to watch that. Like I told myself it would be dumb. Uh, and it's overkill. And it's I'm lucky that anybody even listens to the podcast. Uh, but what I have to do is I have to... All, and here's another thing too. Like I said, I have a sports mentality. I have to pivot away from the sports mentality because... Um, I look at this as if it's a game that I have to win. Like if I put something out and it only gets like a hundred people to listen to it on YouTube, then I'm like, well, fuck that stupid. Why am I even doing this? A hundred people. Who the fuck cares? When in reality, you should just go, Hey man, a hundred people loved my stuff. That's fucking cool. But it gets into a whole larger thing of I should be bigger than I am. And I haven't worked as hard and I'm this age and I should be bigger and I, all these different things. And I go, if I only reached a hundred people, man, what's the fucking point? But the point is that everybody in the fucking world is out there trying to reach everybody. And I somehow got a hundred people to care about what I had to say. If I get a thousand downloads on the podcast every week, I'm just because, you know, did it used to be 5,000? It did. Uh, and so then I'm like, fuck, look what I did. I fucked up. But also podcasting got different. And there were and you know, people grow out of shows and then there were more shows to check out. Um, but I took these as devastating defeats. I'm losing. I'm losing to these people, these people that are successful. I'm I'm somehow I'm in competition with someone who's never fucking heard of me and I'm losing to them. You know, it's like that scene in Mad Men where on the elevator and the guy's just like, you know what, man, I I think this of you and I think you're bad and down trip because I don't think of you at all. You know what I mean? It's like if I was going to who am I shouting at some fucking famous person? You think the five hosts of the late night show are mad that I do a show or whatever the fuck or no, they don't care. And I'm not mad that they do a fucking show. Who cares? It is stupid, in my opinion. I hope it raises a lot of fucking money for their staffs, but good for them. Um, so I'm, I'm babbling a bit here, probably getting off the trail, and I don't mean to. But the, the point is, uh, I, I really want to be a larger online presence. And that starts with me convincing myself that I'm not bothering people by tapping them in their electronic shoulder or by tugging on their electronic shirt sleeve. Uh, you know, if I put stuff up, I hope people fucking like it. What I have to stop thinking is I put stuff up and people better fucking like it or it means I'm not fucking good and they hate me, you know? And like I said, I, I as silly as that I think it is that people are like, ah, you know what, watch my kid eat ice cream or whatever the fuck else, you know, and, and they get, like I, I, I'm just, somebody put this up I saw this the other day. Someone on Facebook was like, uh, someone in all caps, they wrote, someone please play along with me with an exclamation point, all caps. And it was one of those favorite meat, steak or seafood, favorite car, favorite, you know, all those lists they do on fucking Facebook. 
And this person posted this a month ago. And it had no responses. It had nothing. And they had literally, and they have, you know, a bunch of Facebook friends or whatever, but they, in all caps, please someone do this with me. And I just felt tremendously sad that, that, look, we all used to suffer in silence back before social media or the internet or whatever the fuck people who were depressed or sad or, you know, people who had to eat cat food because they were poor and old or whatever the fuck we all suffered in silence. Well, now everyone has the opportunity to shriek, please someone do this with me, please someone call me, save me. Someone tell me you love me. Please someone find me. I'm here. Tell me you care. Anyone. And so I guess I can't be mad at everybody doing that because everyone is reaching out because they're screaming inside to be noticed or seen. I have my own opinions of it. I think it's silly. I think it's this. I, I, but maybe I need to stop thinking like that. I don't know. I, 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 I contain multitudes. What the fuck do I know? I really, I really don't. Like I, I see that and I see the desperation and I feel it and it, it feels like panic that they, that they're going away, that they're slowly fading and no one cares or notices. And I understand that feeling to a certain extent. And that's why it's a fucking crime that I have anybody who cares about what I say, anybody who cares about what I do, anyone who wants to listen to my voice, anyone who wants to watch me on a video and I ignore it and I don't use it to its greatest potential and I don't reach out to these people who have supported me and I don't return the love or the interest that they've shown me. It's a crime. It's fucking criminal to do it. And, and it is a fight for me. It is a slog for me. Uh, because you know, I don't want to post a joke and if it gets 10 likes, I, I want to delete it. I'm just like, fuck that was, that must not have been funny. Like it's this thing where I, I demand, <laughs> I'm sure it's the, the tiny bit of narcissism inside me. That's like, fuck, everybody needs to love everything I fucking do. What the fuck? Uh, but it's not like that. The world isn't like that. And I get it. I, I wish it wasn't, I wish it was different. Um, you know, but, but what I need to do is I need to separate myself because every, you know, likes and clicks can be a disease. And if, and if you're chasing them, it's like, it, it's just like a fucking electronic drug. What I should want to do is express myself to the people who've already shown me that they care about the things that I think about and say, that's you guys. It's anybody new who happens along. And I want to give you more opportunities for that, whether it's on YouTube whether it's on Twitch, whether it's on Patreon, whether it's here, whether it's live and in person, um, you know, and, and maybe that's coming up, you know, we'll see. Uh, I got a list. I got plans. <laughs> uh, what I need to do is understand that that list and plans aren't going to fucking go anywhere if I don't do anything about it. And, and maybe this show is as much of a cheerleading session for myself as it is a break the ice and, hey, I'm back for you guys. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I've said it before, and I never want you to think that it's not true. You are the most important thing in, in my career. Anybody who cares, anybody who's ever laughed at a joke, listened to my voice, anybody who's ever reached out to me, supported whether it's with money or with words or with laughter, you, you are so important to me and my life. And the, the thing that's not important to me is me. The thing, like I don't take you guys for granted at all. I think you're fucking incredible and amazing and I'm grateful you're in my life. I don't know who this fucking guy is. <laughs> I don't love him a ton. I'm not grateful he's around. Sometimes I am, but a lot of the times I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? And it's weird to be that way at 56. You know, calendar flipped in July. I'm 56 now. And, uh, and it's weird to still have a relationship with yourself where you still question who you are and whether you love or even like yourself. It's strange. 
Uh, and it and it fluctuates. Sometimes I fucking love me. And look, I kind of always like me. But it doesn't mean I'm not incredibly angry at me. It's like a marriage. I just can't divorce me. <laughs> so I better find a way to fucking make it work. And I'm glad that you guys even care one iota about me doing that. You guys can get me at Mike at Mike Schmidt comedy dot com. You guys can be my friends at Facebook dot com slash the 40 year old boy. You can follow me at Twitter dot com slash the 40 year old boy. Or wait, wait a second. <laughs> you can follow me at X dot com slash the 40 year old boy. <laughs> That's how long I've been gone. Twitter is fucking something else. Jesus Christ. What an idiot that guy is. All right. I'll get into that later. Uh, uh, you guys can also I'm on plenty of other social media place places. Uh, I'm on Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok at Mike40YOB. And get this, I've added a new one in the time since we've last spoken. I'm on, uh, what the fuck is it? Blue Sky. Um, I Just just go find Mike40YOB on Blue Sky. I posted nothing. Because honestly, I don't, I don't like it. And I only, I told myself when Twitter went away, I would be done. But for a career you can't, and I kind of, you know, you still want to, and I, and look, I like reading fun stuff. That's the thing is, I will tell you this. A lot of people are like fucking Twitter. It's a shithole. I hate it. Well, you know, you can pick who you follow. So when I talk about like all the people talking about the debate, it was a bunch of comedians and stuff. I, it was disappointing to me that they followed it, but you just ignore it. You scroll past it. You know, you, you, you take what you want and you leave the rest. It's, is there's a line from a song that I can't remember right now. Um, you take what you want and you leave the rest. What the fuck is that song? I'll think of it. I'll think of it. I promise. Um, but the point is, like, fucking, I on on Twitter you just scroll past if you don't like shit. Like all these people, are like, I, Elon's a fascist. I'm leaving. So get the fuck out. And then of course three days later they're like, hey, is it still bad in here? Well, go home. What the fuck did you do? You said you were leaving. So blue sky, like I wasn't even gonna, like I'm never joining threads. Never in a million years. I don't care about threads. Doesn't do anything for me. But. uh but Blue Sky, you know, uh, I had a friend, Tammy, and she was like, I have an invite. And I said, all right, I'll take it. That'd be cool. Thank you. And she said, it's kind of dull over there, but it's at least it's not full of shitheads. And I only go and I've gone a few times. <clears throat> There's a couple of like Blaine Capatches over there who I love. And this, there was a, 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 a fucking guy named Darth who uh, he's it's just I don't even know who he is, but he posts about dogs and potatoes. I fucking think he's great. So whatever. So I'm on Blue Sky. So it's again. Uh, I'm on, I'm on X, <laughs> uh, X.com slash the 40 year old boy. And, at, uh, I'm at facebook.com slash the 40 year old boy, but then Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok, and blue sky at Mike four zero IOB. So find me on any of those, follow me, say hi. And I, and again, I haven't posted on Instagram in over a year. I don't think I have to do that more. That's the thing is it becomes this. Where you're like, well, if I'm going to do this, I should do this. And if I'm going to do this, I should do this. And if I should do this, I should do this and do this. And it's it's the grind. It's the hustle. It's the fucking life. And it's the state of the industry right now. Especially, you know, fuck, we're on strike. So it's so funny that I have a built-in audience of people. And now we're on strike. And I like I'm ignoring even that audience. I should have turned to you guys for sustenance and strength right away. But I did not. Uh, all right. So let me and let me. Uh, so all of those places you can find me. Uh, get me at Mike at MikeSchmidtComedy.com. And uh, please remember that I'm uh, part of the Misfit Toys Co-op. I guess we're not a podcasting network. I've heard a lot of disputes. And I should, you know, and I know everybody's like, are you going to record commercials for them? Yes, I am. I'm going to ask Matt if I should. Because I don't even know. I, it might be falling apart. I think it's real still. Um, but it's even, I've been telling you about shows. Like, I don't think some of the shows, I don't think Doug Loves Movies is even part of it anymore. I don't even know. What the fuck? Just, I just know it's me and Never Not Funny for sure. And then whoever the fuck else. Uh, I know Gil Martin's on it too. There you go. Gil Martin's uh, Mental Illness Happy Hour. So, and also the... Uh, uh, oh no, a snake with Danielle and Christine. Go ahead and check that show out. That's fucking fantastic. Uh, if you guys want to hire me for Cameo, you can. It's bookcameo.com is the website, or you can get the Cameo app on your phone. Like I said, I just did one for Mary Beth and her family, and uh, and it was lovely and fun to do. I hope I did it good. I don't know if I did or not, because uh, it's been so long since I've done one. So I, and again, you just, and it's just a weird thing where someone just, it's like, you know, 10 minutes of me being an idiot, which is cool. That's worth 15 bucks or whatever the fuck. Uh, but, but whatever, who cares? 
Uh, so if you want to hire me for Cameo, go ahead and do that. And what do we got? Labor Day coming up. I'll be out. Let me talk to your laborers. Let me, you know what? Let me Attica some unions into fucking going out of the picket line. I can do whatever you want me to do. I can organize. I can be a strike breaker. I can be a heartbreaker. I can be a rule taker. Uh, you know, uh, dream maker. I can be a love taker. Don't you mess around with me. Uh, so hire me for Cameo. That's cool. Patreon.com slash Mike40YOB. Hey, man, you don't have to. It's out there, though. And I need to be more active on there. I've said this over and over and over. Talk is cheap. Um, but when Manny most did that, I it really was like it was a, kind of a bucket of cold water too. Where I, as heartwarming it, as it was, and it made me smile and be like, "That's amazing." It also made me go, "Ooh, you man, you're now you're really letting people down." So it was nice of him. So I I, I can't thank you enough, Manny Mo again. And if you guys want to join again, Patreon.com slash Mike Four Zero Y O B. Uh, please remember that our great friends, the Paranoid Strain and the Flemcat Podcast are out there. You can find them. They're friends of the show, uh, available on the iTunes store, available in Spotify, available wherever your finer podcasts are. The Google Podcast app. I don't even know what they're calling that anymore. Is that a thing? I don't know. Amazon Podcasts? <laughs> I have no idea. But the Flemcat Podcast with our great friend David Hernandez. Go ahead and check that out. Uh, and also the Paranoid Strain with our great friend Fearful Jesuit. Those are available out there and ready. Go ahead and stand up straight and put on a suit and listen to them because they deserve your goddamn respect. I have channels, youtube.com slash the 40 year old boy. That's where you'll find uh, these, the the shows, the archive of shows, but also uh, going forward, perhaps there'll be stuff that I want to do where I'm talking to you about movies or shows. I, again, I don't know who can take, who wants a fucking show from me every day about what I did the day before. Nobody. Uh, and then twitch.tv slash the 40 year old boy. I will be on there today at four o'clock. Uh, you won't hear that by then because, uh, I probably won't post this till the afternoon. Um, but youtube.com slash the 40 year old boy is always available. Go and do me a favor. If you could follow me on youtube.com, because again, I, uh, you need to have a certain number to be modified, uh, modified, moda, monetized, monetized. Um, and I probably have lost people when I'm not posting anything except for this show. So if you could go ahead and again, it doesn't cost you anything to follow me on YouTube. That would be great if you did it. And also twitch.tv slash the 40 year old boy. Go ahead and follow me there. It doesn't cost anything to follow me there. You can subscribe and it's five bucks for the month. Uh, you can use your Amazon prime to subscribe as well. And that just money comes out of Bezos's pocket, whatever you want to do, if that's cool. Uh, but twitch.tv slash the 40 year old boy, youtube.com slash the 40 year old boy. Those are channels that I'm on. Go ahead and check them out. And, uh, yeah. And you know what we'll do going forward? I'm going to have, I can't do it now. Uh, cause I just, I just, as you see, I stitched the plugs into the show and, uh, the old format used to be show, uh, break plugs. And I think we're going to get back to that because here's why you're going to laugh at me. Uh, with the misfit toys co-op, I think I make money for the commercials that get played. And, uh, and I need to give a break for commercials because I haven't, you know, I think they do it in the beginning of the show and at the end of the show, but that break in the middle is also a big deal because, uh, look, man, you know, I need, I need cash. Don't we all need cash? Everyone out there needs some mullions. Everyone out there needs a couple of greenbacks some saw bucks. So I'm going to have to bring back the format where, uh, cause, cause look, I, <laughs> I'll share this with you and you're going to laugh. Um, when I was doing the zoom shows with Lily, there was no way to make a break and put a, put a fucking commercial in, but also, uh, you know, I, I haven't stopped talking here. There's no edit. There's no, and when I do the commercial thing, what I have to do is I literally have to stop talking and then take a, you know, take a breath and I, I save the audio and then I, I, you know, have to build in, I have to bake in the commercials and then I come back and then I cut, you know, I do the, it's, it, it's two different records. I record the show and then I record the plugs. It's two different separate things. Um, well, lazily, I don't want to do that. Because if I stop, I, I like being on a, on a roll and talking just off the top of my head and kind of going for the amount of time. But if I fucking, you're going to make fun of me. If I, if I stop, that means I have to fucking put in commercials. So it means I have to kind of edit differently. Instead of having one audio track that's clean, I have two audio tracks. And then I have to build it and structure it. And I know you, you guys are like, Jesus Christ. Wait, is this the same guy who's telling us he's going to record all the time on YouTube and he's going to do a bunch of different shows? And now he doesn't even want to edit a fucking show where he puts it in so he does one a one-take Jake thing? Because like, I, I prefer one-take Jake. I prefer just fucking rolling. 
uh, particularly because I, I, I don't have a producer. If I had a producer, it'd be a different story. Then I'd be like, I'd, maybe I'd talk for 10 minutes, have a sandwich, talk for a few more minutes, have a bowl of soup. Who the fuck knows? But now the way it works is it's me. So I have to fucking just talk because I don't want to stop down and do that, all, all that dumb shit. So uh, there you go. And it's not even dumb shit, really, when you think about it. It's uh, the job. It's part of what it's supposed to be. Um, but God bless you for even paying attention this long and even even caring for one second about anything I've ever had to say. Because, see, it's just this nonsense. It turns into a hamster wheel, and you're like, I fucking hate this guy. No, you don't hate me. Nobody hates me. I must admit, I don't think anybody hates me, right? Do you? Maybe. Do you? Do you? Do you? Do you want my love? Uh, all right. There you go. So I should just fucking end this, right? Because I don't want to take a break. There's no break. No commercials. Fucking write me and uh, and and thank you for even fucking being here to the end of this fucking show. This was a chore. As, as 14 years has been a chore, but even getting to the end of this show, I'm sure you were like, Jesus Christ, enough. Uh, and I agree. Enough. See you guys next week. Or maybe tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a Doug in your life, or do you wish you had a Doug in your life? Either way, you should check out Wide World of Dougs, the show where comedians Doug Benson, that's me, and Doug Mellard get together to discuss the name Doug and lots of other things with Dougs and non-Dougs. We don't discriminate. Get it wherever you get your podcasts.